on cultural and natural heritage. This proposal received the official support of the United Nations Secretary General, UNESCO, the World Meteorological Organization, the Council of Europe, and over than 100 uh, United Nations member states, putting Greece among the leaders towards a better future for our planet. Having said that, I wish all the success to your meeting and to your project at large. Thank you. So, now um, we are finished uh, the opening. At, uh, the, uh, Sophia. Yeah? S sorry, I'm Helen. Uh, sorry, to, to, uh, sorry for my camera because I have very bad connection and very bad yes, segment. Yes, uh, I know, but, Helen. Uh, <laughs> Do you like to be say something? Before yes, ending just the... before yeah, before ending the welcome session, yes. I would like to thank you and thank uh, each partner in Inomed Up uh, for the effort and the contribution to organize the first international conference, um, especially during this critical situation. Uh, and also, I will, uh, as my uh, colleague uh, Fabrizio said a few minutes ago, uh, it's a circular economy, uh, the gate for the sustainable development in our Mediterranean area uh, for 2030-2040. So uh, I, I thank you to, to, for your organization. Thanks to your team and uh, to all uh, uh, staff working to organize this uh, successful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Khaled. You are from Egypt now. And uh, I would like <laughs> to ask uh, Zayed if he uh, likes to say a word. We have... Uh, uh, two three minutes in order to finish uh, our meeting, uh, our this uh, opening um, section. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very Zayed much. Zayed is Sophia. from Tunisia. Uh, yes. Zayed, Zayed is in Tunisia. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, dear Sophia. I want also to join uh, my colleagues uh, Khaled and uh, Fabrizio, our GDS coordinator, and uh, I would like to congratulate all partners composing. Uh, Innovate App Consortium for the efforts made to reach this first conference organized by the project. We know very well that uh, you have been experiencing tough times during uh, last year due to this uh, pandemic and uh, the conference has been uh, postponed twice. So uh, our special thanks also go to the Municipality of Paratu team for the organization of this conference and of course to you and your team for the excellent coordination carried out to date and for the assistance you are providing to all partners. Thank you once again and uh, wish you a successful conference. Thank you very much, uh, Zayed. Now we have to, to leave uh, the opening session and to give the floor to our keynote speak, speaker, uh, Mr. Je Jesse March, president of TCBL Foundation. So we will continue for the next uh, steps. Thank you. We have to leave the meeting. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, great opening. Uh, great opening. Thank you, Sofia. And uh, so welcome to the to Innomed Up. We are here to uh, promote upcycling, uh, as uh, Sofia said, uh, in the circular economy through innovation and education for uh, creative industries in the Mediterranean cities. This is the first conference. Uh, and uh, my name is uh, uh, Lorenzo Sciadini, founder of uh, uh, of Circular Camp here with the role of facilitator. I will take care of the panelists uh, and whom I ask uh, to uh, so far to keep an eye on uh, their watches to be uh, in time with our program. Uh, we all believe in uh, cross-border dialogues to accelerate transition uh, to the circular economy, especially for the creative industries uh, and uh, cultural industries. Uh, our goal today is uh, to present the uh, mid-term result uh, of the project and in particular the InnomedApp model framework uh, 
and uh, to introduce the small medium enterprises clustering approach uh, adopted by the project. So uh, thanks to the municipality of Prato and to the National Technical University of uh, Athens. All right, so let me tell you now about uh, an uh, American guy who moved to Milan uh, in the mid 70s uh, uh, to work as an industrial designer. Remember the, the 70s were the time uh, when uh, uh, the uh, first ideas of sustainability came uh, forward. Today, this uh, American has mostly became Italian. Uh, he lives in uh, Palermo, from where he links research on innovation with uh, cultural heritage, local, de local development, innovation policies, and uh, smart specialization. We are here now to listen to him. His name is Jesse Marsh. Uh, president of uh, uh, TCBL Foundation. So, Jesse, welcome to InnoMedUp, and uh, uh, it's your time. The floor is yours. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you, everyone, uh, for this uh, invitation. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure and honor to speak to this very exciting project, uh, bringing together people from uh, so many countries and talking about the circular economy. The circular economy is, uh, you know, five years ago, practically nobody was using the word except perhaps Alan MacArthur and some people in the back offices at of the commission, and now it's all over the place. And I would like to offer you some thoughts about, uh, just stop a moment and reflect on what is the circular economy? What are, what are we talking about? And what are some of the main structural aspects that that, that uh, we need to understand to have a broader understanding of what we're uh, doing now i will uh, open if i can do this can you see my screen here and yeah, we can. so i i've prepared a, a presentation uh, trying to address some of the uh, key topics that are in your project, because you're working with the circular economy design, but also urban spaces. And I would like to look at three concepts. One is the idea of specialization, that I think we need to de-specialize and re-specialize uh, design. I think we need to de-design and redesign and uh, creativity. We need to be, to unpack our concepts of creativity for a new recreative uh, understanding. Let's first look at the idea of specialization, which I think is, is perhaps the, 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 the key one to unpick. We are so used to the idea of linear production models, the good old take, make, waste uh, concept that people in the circular economy tell us about. And here you see it reflected in an industry 4.0 uh, schema presented by Siemens. And it's just a linear process from design to production to the consumer. And for a lot of people, the circular economy is just sort of, you know, turning that uh, line, that curve into a circle and closing the loop and somehow getting back to the uh, production process. But circular production models are actually quite different. It's a quite different thing. Let's look at this schema from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, where it's not one loops, there are many, many loops. And when we say upcycling, we're talking about maintaining, we're talking about reusing, we're talking about refurbishing, recycling. It's, it's a complex universe of items that in the linear production model are produced for a, you, you produce for a very specific purpose. We can say they're specialized. And here, the specialized purpose or use of a product or any kind of result of production is totally open to question. What will be the destiny of a shirt? Will it become a, a bag, a pair of pants? Will it become some in, insulation in a building? We don't know. So it, it, the idea of specialization, which drove the whole process of producing that shirt, is thrown into production, into question. Now, in the good old days of artisan production, uh, that wasn't so much the case. Uh, here you see a guy with, with skills, he's working with his hands, and he's got all sorts of stuff on the shelves there, but he's not sure yet what that stuff is for. He's going to give that stuff its, its vocation and its destiny 
only when he begins to put things together and make the things. By contrast, mass production is what began the process of specialization. Here you see the Model T Ford factory. And as Marx would say, the knowledge that that, that artisan had in his head is now in the machines. The, 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 the molds, the, the die casting, the production line is where all of the knowledge about how to make something is residing. And the purpose here is to make sure that anybody can have the job, the human job of uh, putting the things together and labor on the assembly line. So we've despecialized the human dimension and we put all of the specialization and the knowledge about production into the factory itself. Now, well, some will some will say, "Oh, well, but now we've got Industry 4.0 uh, on-demand production. We've got flexible specialization." But, but it's almost it's it's not being more flexible. If we think in terms of the circular economy, this car that's being produced by robots is even worse because this is a car being produced uh, on demand the color, the finishings, the fittings, make it different from any other, but it's even more specialized. How are we going to recycle this? Let's look at our city environments. Let's look at the concept of spatialization, uh, the spatialization which has, has permeated every aspect of society. This is the center of New York. And look that every every block there has a specific destiny and it's been zoned to be residential or commercial or park or whatever we've even specialized skyscrapers and this is not a drawing from the 1980s when multi-purpose skyscrapers were in vogue this is quite recent and it's a building by zaha hadid but there you see some floors are for parking some are for shopping centers some are for restaurants some are for living those those the, those spaces are so specialized. Uh, I like very much Valerio Barberis's reference to the factory being re recovered, reconditioned, despecialized, and respecialized. It's no longer a factory. But how how easy is that going to be with these spaces? So, in, indeed, how can we look at the idea of despecializing? One example is the Renaissance Palace. Take a look at these spaces. Not not so the 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 factory that uh, Barbados was mentioning was indeed quite specialized. But once you took the guts out of it, it looked a little bit like this. And this is Palazzo Farnese's uh, from the Renaissance period. And these rooms do not have bathroom, kitchen, library written on them. They are they are spaces. And the way those spaces are lived depends on what happens during the day, depends on the organizations, depend on who the, 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 the Mr. Farnese, whatever he was, had invited over for the day, what his business was during the day. These are flexible spaces that can be re-specialized on demand at the moment. So they can be, in a certain sense, upcycled. The same with this square, going back to the question of urban spaces. This is Piazza Navona, again in Rome. Sorry, all my examples are from Rome, but look here. In this square, you probably have all of the functions that were in Zaha Hadid's skyscraper. But in two hours, you could have different functions. You could have a restaurant tables where the, where the uh, painters are. You get in and you look at those buildings, you don't know if behind those windows are offices or apartments, or in five years, it may be totally different from what it was before. So these are spaces, they are not generic spaces that don't have a, a personality, that don't have a space, but they are not, their vocation is open to adaptation on the moment. And here, finally, here's a positive example, which is again a fab in, in Rome, but it's it's a fab lab. Here you have a space that is totally despecialized. It allows people to re-specialize it. The equipment in here are 3D printers, laser counters, machinery that can be quite advanced, but whose vocation is quite open. And the people here, these are uh, normal citizens from off the street, 
street who are learning to use these machines and to make uh, to make things, make whatever they want uh, with them. So we do have the possibility of ideas of re-specialization. 3D printers use PLA, which is uh, recycled plastic. How, how could this kind of model perhaps be uh, penetrate the circular economy thinking? Now let's look for a moment at design. I think most of you are designers or attending a design school or have something to do with design. As Lorenzo said, I was a designer way back, uh, uh, way back. Uh, so I do have my opinions about what, and in my day, we were sort of professional designers. You learned to be a designer. You said you were a designer because your role in the linear process was sort of at the very beginning. You would design a product or your client would come to you and say, I need a chair or I want a ceiling fan or whatever and you would design it. And then the whole linear process would go off and what you designed <clears throat> would remain a chair or a ceiling fan or a, uh, or a shirt. The intentionality of despecialization was not built into the design. But let's look at what happens in circular economies. Here again, you have the uh, schema from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Each one of those moments, each one of those arrows that branches off from its original path is a moment of design. It may not be a professional designer doing that, but it's a design moment. Every time you refurbish a re manufacturer, somebody is designing, somebody is giving the new life to uh, something. Everything, every time you extract uh, feedstock and feed it into a new process, you're making a design decision. Every time, even every time you repair something, you're designing. And in fact, let's look at processes of reassembly, of repair, of upcycling. Here's an old one from my days. This book was first published in 1973. And and he, he, he advocated ad hocism, and he celebrated the idea of taking things. And, and uh, here you have a tractor seat, you have wheels from a, a baby carriage, and you have handlebars from, uh, I don't know what, uh, put together to make a, a sort of a rolling chair. And his idea was that things should be uh, taken away from their original purpose and readapted and juxtaposed in new ways and that this was a sort of a democratization of design uh, and i think that has a new relevance today such that i was when i went to look for this cover i was surprised to see that mit press uh republished this book only seven years ago so 40 years after its original publication it's getting a, a new uh attention well what about uh in the ict world things are a little easier because it's uh, you're dealing with immaterial things and it's a little uh, faster to get them off the ground and to give them a new vocation. Quick and dirty prototyping. This is not my title. It comes from a, a uh, the website of Gamma Sutra, it's called. And the idea is is fast prototyping. It's being able to put together rapidly things that aren't finished yet, but give the idea. And the idea is that once you have a prototype in that sense, an incomplete design, people can interact with it. So it's not no longer the designer designing everything. It's the designer interacting with society and interacting with users, consumers, and customers. And we can imagine that kind of pro process is driving the circular economy of, of with people interacting with products and designs as they are being shaped. And in fact, a very similar concept called perpetual beta, this was formulated around the year 2000 with the concept of web 2.0 to say that something was never finished. And in fact, the idea of perpetual beta has become uh, a concept for uh, basically the entire organization of work. Perpetual beta is what programmers say when something is almost ready to be launched on the market, but expert people are able to test it. You may have been offered 
to, to, to test a beta version of some software you use. And the idea of perpetual beta is that you never totally finish it. You're continuously improving it. You're continuously upcycling it. And it never becomes a final finished process. It's a continuous process of design. And in fact, what we're seeing, and this uh, slide uh, shows it, because as against routine standardized work, characterized by labor with all of those horrible words where machines take over. Here again, we have humans are better and we have talent driving the process, which means that the circular economy is very design intensive. Design is permeating every aspect of the re-specialization, of the redefinition of the vocation of something. Now, there are historical models we can draw on. The idea of frugality uh, is something that we could say our grandparents uh, taught us. Uh, make do and mend. This is a wonderful little pamphlet uh, that, uh, that this image here is from the Imperial War Museum of the UK. And this was the kind of thing that was published during the war in the 1940s giving creative ideas how, of how you can mend clothes, how you can, uh, and where, where the, the idea of mending or shortening something or adapting it to fit, uh, to fit somebody's, uh, somebody else would, was actually a creative task and actually part of the design and actually a re-specialization as upcycling might be. And here actually I'm touching also on a tradition of Prato, which got its original vocation from what I hear, uh, because all of the uh, clothing that Americans donated after the Second World War was dumped on Prato, and they learned there to disassemble clothes. They learned to adapt them to different body sizes, because Italians were quite different than Americans at the time. And this make, do, and mend mentality was this, this mentality of readapting and of upcycling is really in, in the DNA of Prato, since I guess that would make it uh, over half a century. But it's coming back. This is jeans with uh, sashiko, which is a Japanese uh, technique of uh, where you see these stitches, which is used to creatively mend a pair of jeans and turn them into something totally new and different. And this, this kind of creative mending is coming back and it's very much part of the circular economy in, a, in, in its anthropological sense of becoming a new culture where design is uh, built into the way uh, people act. And here we are far from the production line. We, we have citizens, and in this case, teenagers, who are actually part of the production process. So what about creativity? We need to also perhaps rethink creativity if we are deprofessionalizing design and trying to make it an integral part of society. Again, way back in my day, but this was, I guess, in the 90s, uh, there was beginning to be talk about creative cities as though a certain urban milieu could contribute to people being creative and cities being able to be resilient and respond creatively to the challenges uh, they faced. This comes from Charles Landry, who is the one who invented the concept. And you see on the left, uh, the, the, some of the features that he mentioned that were part of the an urban environment that stimulates creativity. And we heard from uh, Mr. Barberis uh, earlier about how uh, Prato wants to be an urban environment that stimulates the circular economy. I think it could be interesting to try and get a structured view of this idea. What, what, what features should a city have to promote the circular economy? And in that case, we need to look again at creativity because there are creativities. Uh, this schema shows uh, there are how different countries have different types of creativities. And uh, the Lewis model identifies three types, the cool, factual, decisive planners in blue, the uh, courteous, amiable, accommodating and compromising ones in yellow, which is, which is the Asian model. The blue is sort of what we would call the Nordic model. 
and the warm, emotional, loquacious, and impulsive model of creativity, which is the one uh, at the top in red. And I think most of you would recognize or associate that with the Mediterranean model of creativity. And this is to say that in approaches towards the circular economy, there's not one approach, there's not one creativity, there's not one design culture that we can imagine permeating a sort of anthropological approach to upcycling. There are many, but if we want to look at the way the world is configured, look at the Mediterranean on this map and it's all red. So let's celebrate, let's be proud of our approach to creativity, our approach to the circular economy and demonstrate through facts, through the work that you will do in this project, that it can be an effective answer to the challenges we face. So re-specialization, redesign, re-creativity, and thank you very much. Is it me? Ah, Lorenzo, your your microphone is uh, muted. That's what it is. <laughs> so you can hear. Uh, uh, was my 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 motion to listen to you? You know. So thank you, thank you uh, so much, Jesse. Uh, so happy to hear you. Uh, I would like to spend our listening to to you and uh, your uh, vision. Uh, it would be great if our smart audience. Uh, uh, left uh, would left continue to left uh, comment on our social. We have many comment from from uh, Algeria, from uh, Nablus. So uh, do it and uh, and uh, left comment. We can discuss. We can continue to discuss in uh, uh, social media. The connection between flexibility and upcycling you mentioned uh, is great and to, it's great to design out uh, waste and pollution. You know, uh, Taleb would call it. Uh, uh, the key uh, for the anti-fragility. And uh, so, uh, Jesse, thank you uh, very much. We will uh, uh, meet uh, uh, at the end of the uh, the conference, okay? So right. uh, uh, have a good time. Uh, let's move uh, to the midterm result uh, uh, of the InnoMed uh, uh, project. Uh, it's now my pleasure to uh, turn today's program over pro to Professor Erini Clabastea and uh, Dimitra Lizzardo. Uh, hope uh, the, the pronunciation was uh, you know, acceptable. <laughs> From the National Technical University of uh, Athens. Uh, and uh, and uh, so, please, uh, uh, the, the floor is yours. Uh, tell us more about uh, the uh, midterm result of your, the project. Thank you very much. Uh, Dimitra, we can uh, serve our presentation, please. Dimitra? Yes. We uh, can do you, do you see? Okay, uh, okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, thank you for joining us at the first InnoMedApp Project Conference 2021. I am Irin Klimbatzea, Associate Professor at the National Technical University of Athens. It's indeed a, a great pleasure for me today to walk you through the InnoMedApp midterm results small medium enterprises clustering capacity enhancement through roadmaps and smart tools on behalf of the lead beneficiary NTUA Greece. Let me start by reminding who's who. The National Technical University of Athens is the oldest and most prestigious public university in Greece. The NTUA is participating in the NOMEDAP project with two schools and three laboratories. The School of Architecture is represented by 
the Laboratory of Spatial Planning and Urban Development, and the Simulation Lab for Urban and Architectural Design. The School of Electrical and Computer Engineering is represented by the Microprocessors and Digital Systems Laboratory. The past experience of the Laboratory of Spatial Planning and Development includes extensive expertise in the field of spatial development, issues concerning spatial planning, focusing on planning, protection and designation, spatial development and tourism, cross-border cooperation, small manufacturing and creative enterprises, sustainable development and planning systems in Europe. With more than 63 projects in total, several programs among these can benefit the development of the NOMADAP project. The previous experience on relevant concepts has contributed in creating bonds and strong synergies with key actors and stakeholders that will be of great importance for the implementation of the NOMADAPs, such as the Municipality of Athens, Athens Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Athens Traders Association, Chamber of Jewelers in Athens, etc. As you know, the NTUA is the lead beneficiary of the NOMADAP project, being responsible as the head of project coordination for the administrative and financial management and work package one and four coordinator for the scientific research and analysis monitoring. During the first year of the project, the major outcomes from previous researches and activities are considered as inputs mainly from the initial research results for a NOMADAP model, which is the project's methodological core. These have set the ground for the preparation of small medium enterprises, clustering capacity enhancement through roadmaps and smart tools. In particular, the specialization strategy of holistic approach at local level was carried out using the instrument of short paced workshops. The six clustering roadmaps were pursued through a combination of mapping cultural creative industries value chains and existing interactions with circular economy models, but also existing connections and networks in the cultural creative industry sector per city. Eventually, the four clustering small tools will be implemented per each participating city, consisting a smart bicycle, a central information system, a smart garbage bin, and an open source repository for secular designs and eco-design toolkits. So let me be very clear about our research results achieved so far. The methodological approach for short paced workshops per city was based on a common set of clear selection criteria for key stakeholders per city answering who, why, how, when will contribute, being based on their know-how, the level of expertise, competence, and sustained capacity standards. Several workshops were organized during the July and August 2020, either in the form of seminars in situ or online webinars. Five webinars in Athens, Greece, one webinar in Prato, Italy, one seminar in Palermo, Italy, one seminar in Tunis, Tunisia, two workshops in Hebron and Nablus, Palestine, and one seminar in Irbit, Jordan. More than 300 participants in total. Their main purposes included social engagement of both potential key stakeholders and target groups of future beneficiaries for the Inomeda project, as well as active involvement and exchange among participants in order to first understand the current dynamics per area, prospects of growth, various external factors, 
and impacts of relevant public policies. Second, distill CCI SME specific characteristics and supra local and local priorities per city. Third, broaden the vision and thinking of in for integrated circular urban projects. And fourth, deliver a holistic system for the transition towards circular economy in view of more sustainable social, economic and urban development models. Here are some pictures taken by the SWOT Pest workshops held during the summer of 2020 in its participating city. Hello, I'm going to present you the research results achieved so far. So the SWOT uh, Pest results set the key priorities for the specialization strategy. And they highlighted the perceptions of circular economy per city, the barriers and motives to move towards circular economy, also the good practices and synergies among upcycling, creativity, urban settings. But most of all, how the small medium enterprises can overcome COVID-19 challenge. In this context, our research has shown the need for establishing circular economic con concept effectively uh, for best practices to integrate upcycling in creativity, design, innovation, uh, production, innovative production, for networking opportunities in med cities, uh, the role of planning, the need for better regulation and legisl legislative framework, better funding and support of businesses, better knowledge. Uh, it also raised the issue of waste disposal, uh, broader collaborations in uh, fields uh, such as consumption awareness, the know-how repurposing, the need and the role for institutional stakeholders to support initiatives, the coordination among authorities in order to assure the consideration of circular economy in their future planning. What was our methodology uh, for specialization strategy design? It was based on answering certain questions, such as what, by studying the existing policies and best practices, answering which and where, by forming a general categorization of local CCI SMEs, answering why and how, by concluding on a classification of local CCI SMEs. In brief, uh, the research conclusion have been the following. The cultural creative industries remain an important and dynamic economic activity at Mediterranean level, and it is a, a critical part of domestic industries and tourism sector that is linked to history. There is a strong interest for synergies, especially from the youngest creators. There are also opportunities and obstacles in the access to new knowledge, to training and financing. There is a need for joint effort from society, administration and policy makers. There is a need to enhance sustainability of urban heritage elements through new circular economy opportunities. But most of all, this transition phase has to be practical and tangible for the whole population. So our strategy aims to provide a guide for a new industrial symbiosis to facilitate this shift from a linear to a circular production model. These are the, uh, these are the conclusions that have emerged. A wide variety of practices, projects and initiatives have been detected. Practices are characterized by context similarities and also differences. And uh, the cultural creative industries refer to different spatial distribution and concentrations in the centers of the Mediterranean cities. There are also various ways that the, these selected practices may contribute to circular economy through employing digital fabrication techniques, the final product that can support a new lifestyle, uh, the contribution to education and awareness with events, workshops, or the promotion of cultural innovative products, deploying business collaboration, promoting solidarity, and most of all, sharing economy. Given uh, COVID-19, uh, the strategic and planning, and planning digital transformation is presumed that can promote innovation networks and also facilitate clustering capacity enhancement. 
The methodological approach for the CCI SMEs clustering roadmap uh, is based and takes full advantage of two previous uh, preliminary surveys uh, that focus on mapping value chains and existing interactions with the circular economy models, mapping existing connections and networks in the CCI sector per city. And also additional information is going to be gathered from targeted network, uh, from, from targeted interviews. And this pool uh, of interviews consists of uh, CCI SMEs that are already engaged in circular activities or have a potential to do so also key stakeholders and other informants. It will be the same pool uh, from which we are going to draw the future benefic beneficiaries for pilot innovative products, uh, for vouchers, for financial tools. The visions, the objectives, the actions, the calendar of implementation for culture, creative industry, small, medium enterprises clustering in med cities will be defined in a way that it can bring innovation through circular economy. And please remember that clustering has a twofold purpose. The first one is to facilitate the SME's access to innovative new business models. And the second is to promote social inclusion and sustainability. As for the next steps, uh, we should note that the specialization strategy and clustering roadmaps will be applied in order to boost and retrofit uh, the socio-urban circularity uh, workshops, the pilot clusters, innovative products, uh, reuse open market, the training activities, the innovation vouchers and the financial tools, uh, and also the NOMEDAP model for the, for the Mediterranean area, through which the digital transition it is expected to be achieved. Before coming uh, to a close of these remarks, we would also like to present you uh, this uh, flowchart in order to document the reflections uh, of future activities and their connections with certain outputs, all of which will conclude in retrofitting the NOMEDAP model. So uh, let me thank you for your attention and we sincerely hope you will enjoy today's debate and networking. So thank you so much, uh, Professor Irini and uh, Dimitra. Uh, great research result. Uh, and uh, let's move on. Our next speaker is uh, Paolo, my friend Paolo Guarnieri from uh, the municipality of Prato. Paolo, what about the InnomedUp model? The mic. We cannot hear you, Paolo. So I, uh, I think we should move on and uh, till Paolo is uh, managing the issue with the mic. Uh, uh we can move to our next speaker uh, professor shadi uh, gadam from uh, birzeit university um, uh, uh, professor shadi my association works uh, on uh, uh, how to finance circular economy so um, uh, this is the 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 the, uh, the the contribution of your speech how to act how to access to innovation and finance you have the floor Sorry, I, can I? I'm trying to share the screen. Do, do you hear me? We can hear you, we can see you, but I'm not the screen. Uh, uh, Vincenzo is going to share the screen for you, okay? He's going yes, to publish the presentation, okay? So you yes, just please. go. Okay, now it's going up. Thank you, everybody. Good morning for all of you. And I am grateful that I, I am a part from this event, the first conference of Inumed Up. So uh, I will uh, present
I have a problem with moving this. I can't move the screen, you know. Uh, so, uh, Vincenzo, uh, uh, you just look at your screen and Vincenzo is uh, moving the presentation, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, you just ask for the next slide and Vincenzo is going to move. Yes, yes, I will do that. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, Birzet University, as part in Inomed, a project will be responsible for uh, work package six. And this work, work package will uh, deal with the SMEs, access to innovation and finance. And Birzeit University in Palestine will be the coordinator, WP coordinator of this package. Next, next. The final beneficiaries expected from this uh, uh, work package are approximately 60 CCI SMEs from all projects partners. We will use several tools from a special training for CCI SMEs to innovation vouchers, to mentorship and guidance schemas. Next. Uh, the work package includes three uh, parts. The first part or the first output will be training activities for SMEs in each participating city. The second is the producing of innovation vouchers. And the third will be access to cross-border mentorship schemas and the new financial tools. Next. Output 6.1, the target group is the CCI SMEs and the spin-offs in the six participating cities. The target group involvement will be in participation in the training activities as final beneficiaries in order to develop innovation strategies with a specialization in circular economy. Next. Uh, actually, we already started our activities in uh, this work package during the first year. Uh, we started at month 10 with drafting general guidelines for training activities structures. Uh, this we finished and we are expecting the CCI SMEs will be introduced to the subject of circular economy, resource efficiency, and eco-innovation with the aim to understand business opportunities in this sector. The second activity, which is ongoing now, is the preparation of training material in a program and selection of experts to participate. Each partner will prepare the training material with targeted CCI SMEs, resulting from the drafted roadmaps and find needed experts. Next. Also, we will have to the preparation and organization of local training activities. It will start at month 16 and will end at month 18. Each partner will appoint a local organizing committee that will be responsible for the all training logistics. Also, the, after that, we will go to staging of the training activities in the six participating cities. So 10 plus SMEs per city will actively participate and those will be encouraged to join the pilot clusters and submit proposals to be granted cross-border innovation vouchers. Next. Uh, six, six, uh, the output that we received from the first part of 6.1 are innovation and production design, marketing and networking, technical capacities and recycling and machinery. They will be covered in 10 days program with the general objective of trainees are expected to be able to produce innovative, creative, cultural and eco-friendly products that have been appropriately priced, packaged and delivered. Next. The output two, 
targeting groups will be also CCI SMEs and spin-offs in the six participating cities, and their involvement will be awarded innovation vouchers in order to access cross-border advisory support and acquire equipment to favor their innovation. Next. We have uh, several subcategories. Uh, the selection of CCI SMEs proposals in each participating cities. This will start at month 25 and will finish at month 27. The, we will have an open call to award innovation vouchers and to be released. Non-refundable direct financial support to CCI SMEs who will adopt circular production practices. The second activity will be establishment of cross-border knowledge transfer partnerships. It will start at month 28 and will finish at month 33. 10 plus SMEs will benefit from cross-border innovation support services. Innovate up the e-platform supposed to play a complementary role. Next, please. And the last uh, leg from this uh, work uh, sub work package is the evaluation report on innovation vouchers. Start month will be 34 and end month 35. Evaluation must include the granted equipment, product services produced, new business models and the spin offs, and the established cross border and partnerships. Each partner will share their feedback. Thus, Birzia University will compile the final evaluation report. Next, please. The output three expected is CCI SMEs and especially MPC CCI SMEs. They're involved with to develop cross-border cooperation and get access to innovation through R&D activities, large companies' use of laboratories, prototyping and testing, etc. Next. So we have also here some uh, sub-activities, drafting of guide for access to financial tools for CCI SMEs who want to innovate in, C in circular economy. We have the, the start month and the end month. BZ University will draft the guide. Guide will be published in a printed form and digitally. Also, we will have to do evaluation report on mentorship cross-border schemas. Also, this will start at month 33 and end at month 36. Evaluation must include the granted mentorship cross-border schema new business models and the spin-offs, and the established cross-border and partnerships. Each partner will share their feedback, thus BCU will compile the final evaluation report. Next, please. So uh, the last event will be the cross-border mentorship schema. It will be at the end of the project, starting at month 33 and finished, finished at 36, mentorship schemas for CCI SMEs in MPC will be offered by the project predetermined criteria for SMEs selection also will be provided. Next. This is actually the activities overview that we are, we will have in uh, WP6. Actually, we can see here that we finished the red circles. The finished job, the green, is the ongoing activities now. Now, in, the, in semester four and semester six, five and six, we will continue working with the other activities until we finish all uh, planned activities and sub-activities. Next, please. Thank you very much for your listening. So uh, thank you, Professor uh, Gadban. Uh, finance and good mentorship are uh, crucial for the transition. You have a 
a big responsibility and uh, a lot of work. So thank you very much. Thank let's go back to Paolo. Let's go back to Paolo. Paolo, uh, what Can about uh, the mic? Can you hear me? Oh, fantastic. Okay. So just so, uh, tell us more about uh, the InnoMed app model. Yes. I will do that in a second. Let me share my presentation. Is Vincenzo doing it for you? Uh, I should be able, but I don't see my other bot. Let me do like this. Uh, do you see it? Can you see it? No. No? Okay. What are the shots? What is that? I'm trying all the way. Maybe Vincenzo will do it for me. Vincenzo, can you do it? Vincenzo is going to advise you to open the PDF. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Uh, yeah. It's coming. And, uh, go in the second screen. Do you see it? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, Vincenzo is doing it for us. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. If you want to start with the comment. Yes. Yes, of course. I want to thank the previous presentations from uh, Professor Calabazzea and uh, Lizardo and uh, Shad Shadi. Also, I want to connect uh, back to what uh, the key uh, note uh, speaker was saying, that uh, developing a, a model for the circular economy is no uh, linear task. <laughs> as a, take my pun as a literal, uh, as, as literal as possible, because uh, uh, what we are doing now in uh, InnoMedApp is that uh, we are doing two uh, preliminary phases of developing the model. Uh, so you can go to the next slide, Vincenzo. Uh, actually, before defining the model, we are doing a, a first phase of appraisal. Appraisal of what? Of what is the context uh, within uh, the, the five cities, uh, the six cities that we're dealing with, and uh, in terms of policies, in terms of trends, in terms of uh, what is the economic tissue in these cities. The model aims to give uh, uh, a framework for Mediterranean cities to manage waste at the urban level. And uh, also it aims to be uh, the product, the end product, but also the a, a lively and going on ongoing contribution to the debate how to make uh, the Mediterranean area a circular area of excellence uh, uh, worldwide. So next slide, please. As you see, our consideration for the model is that uh, we take into account uh, uh, many more things that a single enterprise could uh, take into account. We deal with, uh, of course, material flows, but also we take into account uh, social features, the actors, all round actors. This can be economic actors, but also uh, social actors and uh, uh, institutional actors. We take into account SMEs, what they create and what they cannot uh, recreate. And uh, we take into account what is the political and the policies background in each and every region of the project. Next slide, please. To do this, we have uh, made a comprehensive review of the context in the different regions of the project. And uh, by analyzing through different activities in World Package 3, for which uh, the municipality of Prato is in charge, is uh, responsible, Together with the other partners, we have provided a methodology so that we could analyze the existing cultural and creative industries in each uh, uh, city of the project. What are the policies at different levels and different spe special domains, like the national, regional, and urban levels? And what are the ongoing 
practices, trends and models existing or not existing in different areas of interest. Uh, so we created a template to collect this information and what we see in the few slides that uh, I have provided uh, and coming next uh, is uh, the outcome, the very synthetic outcome of this uh, uh, context uh, uh, overview. So let's go to next slide, please. So the uh, first uh, uh, strategic uh, context report is the, uh, to provide the Un basic understanding of uh, how the circular economy exists and is implemented in each region of the project. Uh, in terms of uh, what are the cultural and creative industries, SMEs existing, what are the policies and synergies that could, uh, could exist between these uh, CCIs and the circular economy, and what are the practices, trends, and models. Uh, of course, uh, as you can see, next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, different uh, condition exist in different cities, in different nations, in different countries of the project. And uh, what is we are trying to do is to create a, uh, a common basis so that everyone can learn and improve from where it, where it is. So we see that in the, for the context of Greece, uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, Cultural and creative industries focus a lot on traditional crafts in, in tourism related uh, um, firms, but also there is a lot of uh, lively, lively dynamism in uh, what are new cultural and creative industries that we will see are existing in Athens and throughout Greece. So as regards the, uh, the policies, we have uh, different uh, 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 different waste prevention and management uh, uh, policies there also at the national level. I won't go in the, into the details because the titles of the different policies are in my presentation, so you can find uh, them later or deepen the, the understanding later. But also there are good practices and trends in Greece and especially in Athens where they uh, can uh, refer to database of practices, projects, initiatives, and also many municipal, uh, municipal umbrella events that bring together creative energies and uh, uh, what are the uh, production flows uh, in, in the region. So next slide, please. This is for Italy. Of course, Italy has two cities where uh, we work on, and uh, these are Prato, uh, where I come from, and uh, uh, Palermo, where the focus from Cresma will be. And there we have completely different kind of uh, urban uh, dynamics for the waste management, because in uh, Prato, maybe you know it already, that uh, Prato is basically in a textile district that uh, overlaps the over overlays in the urban, urban area. So our focus for Prato will basically be in the textile and design area, but also with a focus on urban regeneration. Urban regeneration is a, a theme that uh, occurs and reoccurs in all the cities that we are dealing, we are focusing on because uh, rearranging existing archi architectural heritage and uh, historical buildings is a way to uh, create new uh, possibilities of social and economic development without creating, uh, uh, again, impact, a negative impact on the environment and the territory. So this is uh, true for Prato, but it's also true for Palermo, where uh, there is, uh, uh, let's say, many different initiatives also from Chamber of Commerce and uh, from different NGOs to create a more uh, environmental awareness for the circular economy. And uh, of course, this in the context of the national policies that are available in Italy, that you can see on the right side of the, uh, of the slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so for Jordan, for Jordan, there is uh, also uh, traditional crafts, uh, a lot of, cultural and creative industries are in traditional crafts, so weaving, ceramics, uh, spices, and, and uh, also natural crafts and traditional handmade objects and sports making. Here also, uh, you can see that SMEs 
uh, encounter uh, several barriers to uh, um, for which they need support to be uh, facilitated towards the circular economy. This kind of support can be of a financial nature, but also of political nature and also of uh, awareness raising nature among the citizens. Of course, here also are national policies that uh, are in, uh, like uh, the strategy in Jordan until 2024 for recycling and reuse to uh, pilot separate collection systems for different kinds of materials. But all these have to be, uh, let's say, implemented and uh, rooted in the economic tissue. Next uh, slide, please. In Palestine, in Palestine also, uh, according to the local production and traditional uh, productions, uh, there is uh, embroidery and uh, olive, olive wood carving, ceramics, glass pottery, and so on, and mats from wool and, and soaps and so on. Also, there are, uh, a very uh, positive trend in Palestine is that uh, there are awareness uh, creating programs for women and schools for solid waste management and also heritage preservation. Mm -hmm. These we will find also in, in the other countries, of course, but uh, as you can see from the pictures also, this is very strong and felt and uh, cared for in Palestine. There are policies for uh, solid waste management and uh, also uh, integrating sustainable uh, development and clean environment uh, uh, for uh, 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 the rights of current and future generations. So next slide, please, Vincenzo. Uh, so finally, in Tunisia, uh, uh, there is a, a strong, uh, a very uh, intense area of creativity in uh, Tunis, in the Medina, we will see the geographical focus of, of, the, of the project will be in the historical center of, uh, of Tunis, where uh, basically, uh, craftsmanship and craft trade in different uh, uh, areas, like uh, you see here, is silver objects or uh, musical instruments and so on, are uh, and uh, shoemaking also are very, very uh, much diffused and uh, available. So uh, also here we have awareness uh, create, uh, creating programs for women and schools and uh, so. I have uh, probably a, a, a refuso, uh, so, uh, is the same as uh, for Palestine, but also here there are lots of uh, awareness raising uh, activities for women in schools, also in Tunisia. And the policies are different at the national, mostly at the national level. So, next uh, slide, please. We go uh, now from the context to the uh, frameworks. So, the context up now. Uh, was uh, uh, analyzing what is available in the territories of the project and the framework is trying to uh, figure out what will be the focus of the project uh, to develop the pilots and to develop the new value chains which are circular in the region. So let's go to the next slide, please. So this is the focus for Athens, it's in the center of Athens where uh, uh, as I was saying before, so different uh, activities in uh, jewelry, clothes, leather, micro clusters for upcycling are available. And also there is possibility for material flows to recover lots of uh, materials like uh, biodegra biodegradable waste, paper, plastic, ferrous metals, aluminum, and so on. Uh, what is interesting is that the city is doing umbrella events and policies to uh, support uh, the development of uh, creative and circular uh, value chains to uh, also to a network of maker spaces that are put uh, together that are put in connected to uh, collaborative platforms. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a, a, a so to say, a low uh, awareness and sensitivity from the side of the citizens, where you see consumption partners, that uh, uh, affect uh, so many different uh, also psychological and social uh, elements affect the behavior of the citizens as regards uh, uh, 
the, the attitude, the attitude towards circular uh, products and the management of waste in the in the city. Next uh, slide, please. So <clears throat> this is Prato, the second city after Athens uh, in the project, and then we have a, another four for a total of six. And here the focus is also close to the city center, which is a common feature for most of the cities of the project. Uh, where we are, uh, there is a, a lot uh, of uh, urban, urban regeneration uh, that is under uh, that is uh, um, being uh, implemented, also to host the new circular and creative in, uh, SMEs that are trying to different uh, activities, also also artistic uh, activities, to uh, find new ways of upcycling the material, the textile waste that is affecting the, the, the urban uh, territory. Uh, we have a special problem in Prato because textile waste is a, a very much, uh, a, a lot of tons are created all over the city. Uh, and uh, we have uh, currently environmental issues because this kind of waste is considered special waste and cannot be dismissed easily or cannot even be recycled easily. So we need a really creative boost, creative ideas to deal with this uh, uh, very uh, significant material flow in the city. Also, we can uh, uh, consider that every person on the average in Western countries is uh, throwing away around uh, uh, a few tens of kgs, 40 kgs in the States, for example, per person in the year. So this creates great, huge material flows that are affecting the environment. Next slide, please. This is uh, the, the framework for Palermo, where the focus will also be in the, uh, let's say, in a renovated urban area, Cantieri Tisa, where uh, cultural and creative industries are hosted by the municipality, and also <clears throat> uh, where many activities to create uh, more uh, sens sensitivity and awareness in the, cities, uh, in the citizens are implemented. Uh, for example, there are many um, in municipal initiatives like uh, social uh, uh, tailoring and uh, um, also uh, circular economy uh, uh, in festivals uh, that are taking place in Palermo. There is a very pure culture for waste management in Palermo. There is uh, most of shops and SMEs have to deal with the waste uh, on their own terms. They, there is no municipal waste management uh, on the, uh, in, um, that is generally taking uh, care of the, of the material flows in Palermo. So the, we look forward to contribute with Inomedap. Next slide, please. So this is the Medina of Tunis, we, uh, uh, where the focus uh, for Tunisia will be uh, with the project, the Inomeda project. Uh, so this uh, Medina of Tunis is uh, a hub for at least three sectors, ar architectural, creative industries, so uh, leather crafts like shoe, a lot of uh, workshops with uh, traditional shoemakers, and also uh, there is a, a possibility to recreate the uh, Islamic art of uh, science for the shops and uh, uh, calligraphy and Islamic artisans for uh, this kind of craft. There are th the material flows here also are very huge and are not uh, uh, um, and should be uh, let's say managed to uh, better and more efficient uh, uh, management policies. But at the same time, Medina attracts a lot of designers, artisans, and flourishes with creativity. So uh, there is a lot of education, uh, there are a lot of educational initiatives in Medina also to create uh, uh, awareness, but also the, the need for private public partnership to improve uh, the municipal waste management. And on the average, there is a mo very modest waste sorting from the citizens. So let's see the next one, please. So this is for Palestine. In Palestine, we have two focus areas in Hebron and Nablus. Here uh, also, as I was saying, so the focus is on olive uh, wood, stone and mosaics, embroidery, 
ceramic, silver, and so on. And what is interesting, while we uh, were uh, analyzing uh, the, the, the context in uh, Palestine, is that as while on one hand the citizens have poor environmental awareness, the uh, older generations had a tradition of recycling practically everything. So there is a need also to go back to, to these practices and uh, uh, because the material flows are very important uh, significant here as well, especially from uh, uh, carpentry and uh, plastic stones, uh, and also from agriculture, like uh, the remnants of uh, olive oil production, which uh, regularly go to pollute the, flow, the, the, the streams in Palestine. So there is a, a lot of work that can be done to improve this situation, also tracing back uh, the culture to what was the original culture of not wasting resources in the uh, pre former generations in Palestine. Next slide, please. And I think it's the last one. So the focus in Jordan will be in Irbid, the northern uh, west part uh, of, uh, uh, of the country. Also here, there are uh, lots of uh, uh, different subsectors in cultural and creative industries that can be affected by the Inomera project in metal work, furniture making, wood turning, glass crafts, paper crafts, jewelry, etc. So in, here we have that, uh, uh, although there is a SME's awareness about environmental issues, uh, there, there is also a problem. There are problems in higher prices for recycled items, and also the consumer perceptions are that uh, recycled items are lower value items uh, um, in, in uh, comparison to virgin items. So there is a lot to, of work to do also in this area at the cultural levels. So final slide, just to remind uh, what is our goal with the model is an inspirational sentence from uh, William McDonough that is a co-author of Cradle to Cradle and just the highlights from the sentence will uh, be enough to inspire us to go on and develop the model. So waste does not exist in nature. One organism's waste becomes food for the other. And so waste in a way equals food. Thank you for your attention. So uh, thank you very much, Paolo. Very clear and detailed model and, and the huge uh, and huge program. Um, considering minor issues uh, uh, with mics and sharing screen, we are uh, quite on time. Thanks to Lorena uh, for managing the agenda and to our panelists for their commitment. Commitment. We have a comment. Uh, um, if uh, if uh, um, we can pass the comment. Uh, uh, on the screen. Uh, the comment is about uh, uh, good morning and thank you for the, this presentation. Um, uh, I would like to ask how uh, are the social barriers uh, uh, like consumption mentally are addressed in the framework? Uh, this is an important uh, topic. I hope uh, our uh, following panelists uh, are going are gonna, uh, um, like like uh, managing this issue, uh, um, uh, we uh, um, uh, we think that uh, um, the the uh, awareness raising is important. Uh, that's why, for example, in Prato, we have created a lot of uh, um, uh, activities, a lot of uh, project. But now uh, let's uh, thanks our panelists and and let's move on. It's now time for uh, uh, the Inomedap uh, uh, partners. Uh, we want to know more about the integration of the Inomedap strategy in the Mediterranean cities, Athens, uh, Palermo, Tunis, Hebron, and Nablus, and Irbid. Uh, so uh, I will call upon uh, Angeliki uh, de, uh, uh, de Merci and Maria uh, uh, Cosari from the National uh, Technical University of Athens. And uh, I think uh, Maria Plota is here from uh, the Environmental Planning, Engineering and Management. So please uh, uh, tell us more about your project in uh, Athens. 
Okay, okay. Good morning, everyone. Let me share my screen. So please uh, uh, tell us more about your... Can you see me? Yeah, sure. We can see you. Okay, first of all, thank uh, everyone to attending uh, this uh, very early morning uh, conference across uh, so, ma so many Mediterranean cities. Um, through the, um, during this session, we would like to, um, uh, to point out the main features of the strategies that uh, Mediterranean cities uh, have uh, built in order to integrate uh, circular practices uh, in the field, in the wide field of uh, creative and cultural industries. Uh, I am Angeliki de Merdi. I am speaking to you from the National Technical University of Athens and with, uh, together with my colleagues Maria Kutsari and Maria Plota, uh, we have prepared this presentation uh, on the issue on, the, on how we have managed to build the strategy uh, for Athens. As it has uh, mentioned already before, uh, in the building of the strategy, uh, two partners uh, participated, the National Technical University of Athens um, through two schools, School of Architecture and School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and three research uh, laboratories, and also the participating partner from Greece, from Athens, the EPM, the uh, Environmental Planning, Engineering and Management, uh, who is a, a specialist in environmental issues and circular economy applications. Um, we followed three different methodological uh, steps to build the Athens strategy. Uh, first of all, we conducted the, the state-of-the-art review, both on circular economy and uh, CCI SMEs, cultural and creative SMEs. Uh, also, we organized five webinars in Athens, um, digital uh, seminars, webinars, in, or, uh, in which over uh, 70 stakeholders attended in order to determine the existing opportunities, threats, strengths and uh, weaknesses, uh, the SWOT analysis. And finally, through our elaboration uh, of secondary sources of information, we mapped the cultural and creative CCI SMEs within the municipality of Athens and also we have selected a sum of uh, potential beneficiaries for the future research activities. Uh, here we can see the first, the very first uh, research uh, results. We can see an intense uh, collocation of activities uh, in the case study area, which is the historical center of Athens. Uh, which present a remarkable density and diversity of activities. Um, we see also the spatial distribution of creative SMEs, uh, which uh, such as like as uh, visual and performing arts, audiovisuals, uh, printed media, publishing, uh, musical instrument and toys, and of course jewelry, um, across the historical center and the commercial triangle of Athens. Um, finally, we have selected some SMEs. Uh, or initiatives uh, operating car currently in Athens and uh, that could uh, integrate or promote uh, circular practices through their activities, uh, as you can see on, uh, on your left. Uh, here we mainly refer to crafts, designs, design and maker spaces, maker spaces, something like uh, Fab Labs that we have also heard uh, by Jesse. Uh, what we see about circular economy applicability in the um, sector of creative and uh, cultural industries is that the, tra the transition towards the circular economy is still at the starting point in, uh, in Athens. And synergies uh, with uh, CCIs are only implied or not sufficiently supported by practical action plan or um, sustainable urban strategies. Now, what we know about uh, the um, CCI, which is uh, their profile and the main feature, features. Uh, we know that they aggregate uh, spatially and they know networking each other. 
uh, within the historic center of Athens and uh, could be models of industrial coexistence uh, in the urban centers. Also, CCIs create for both formal and informal value and supply chains uh, that could be seen now currently as functioning business model. Uh, another characteristic uh, uh, is that uh, on, the, uh, on the one hand, the young creators put, put in front of the ingenuity and creativity uh, and, having, and have uh, already in mind um, the circular uh, direction um, for use or reuse or refurbish uh, or recycle or uh, upcycling materials and objects. And on the, on the other hand, we have the old creators, which are very, very useful because uh, they hold uh, um, traditional techniques and uh, know-hows and they provide origina originality. So um, it would be great if we could combine uh, these characteristics that uh, young and old creators uh, bring about. Uh, but in recent years, uh, we, we can see an increase in the interest and, and awareness about the integration of circular economy practices. And although we know that there is uh, the know-how, the creators um, face severe problems of financing, problems of integration, new technologies and innovations in their production, or problems in access to new knowledge um, and to technologically advanced means of production. So we gather all the above mentioned and uh, tried to diagram in, um, uh, in this diagram, uh, which is the proposed uh, Athens strategy. We have chosen the motto, the motto uh, Athens circles of creativity, meaning that we aim at uh, the maintenance, the strengthening, the support, and the networking of CCIs uh, within the historic center of Athens. Um, we also aim at the potential of the circular practices in CCI that could creatively produce new uh, suggestions and uh, innovative products, and also drawing a new uh, and external knowledge and training on this about the use of uh, new technologies and smart tools in order to accelerate their innovation and their competitiveness, et cetera, et cetera. Through this strategy, this strategy we expect a new perception of materials, um, also a shift uh, towards innovation and implementation of new uh, technologies, the development of existing and new clusters and networks, um, the implementation of good practices regarding the circular economy, and the creation of new job opportunities. Uh, to sum up, we know that all these features compose a complex image of Athens, creating the conditions for cultural and creative industries uh, to emerge as critical, as dynamic uh, and original, so that uh, on the one hand, they can integrate more and more circular practices in their production, but also serve as a guide to good practices regarding the use and reuse of materials or eco-design or eco-production uh, of uh, products. And finally, they could play a key role uh, in terms of uh, ways of cooperation and the establishment uh, of sustainable value chains and of course the urban revitalization. Creative and cultural industries and their networks uh, could also play a very important role um, in creating positive social uh, impact, both in terms of economic viability and revitalization of urban centers as well as in terms of empowerment and integration of marginalized groups um, that we know that uh, are existing in uh, Mediterranean cities, such as young women, women, unemployed, homeless, immigrants, refugees, etc., etc. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope to discuss, it, uh, discuss all this later. Thank you very much.
So uh, thank you, thank you. I love your Athens uh, circle of creativity. Wow, great. Uh, uh, our next speaker is uh, Alessandro Lagrassa, Alessandro uh, Richards from the Center uh, for Economic and Social Research for the South of Italy. Alessandro, you have the floor. What happens in our beloved uh, Palermo? <laughs> well, unfortunately, as Jesse knows very well, uh, the, 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 the period for Palermo about the, the theme of, uh, of, uh, of waste management is particularly complicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was uh, very difficult to have uh, a good relation in this period with the, with the administration. But we hope to, to have more possibilities of uh, involving them when we will organize the conference from Palermo directly. Um, however, the, the, the good news is that there are a lot of initiatives spread all around the, the city and uh, the possibility of uh, involving people is, is growing. So what we are doing now is exactly the uh, creation of networks uh, between all these initiatives that are uh, spreading in the, in the city. I will try to share my little presentation. Uh, share screen, if I remember. Okay. In the meanwhile, I'm asking uh, if uh, uh, Vincenzo can do it for you, in case you cannot do it. Let's see if this okay, is the right Okay, Vincenzo is going to do for you, okay? You can see it? Yeah. Are you seeing this? Yeah, we do. Okay, perfect. So, um, I, will, uh, I will say some words about these, the strategies we are, we are working on in, uh, in Palermo. As I told you, in, uh, in Sicily and Palermo in particular, the possibility of giving uh, value to the waste cycle is still very limited by a lot of uh, opponent interests that involve both public administration and private and sometimes illegal interests. Public companies for waste management are usually less equipped than private ones. The waste collection processes are highly concentrated in a few hands. And in particular, the, sub, the separate waste collection is reaching good results in Sicily, but not in the main cities, Palermo, Catania, and Messina. Um, moreover, the collected materials are rarely processed in Sicily, and this led to the fact that only few enterprises are uh, investing in recycled products. And that's the interesting thing. Most of them started from eco-social initiatives. This led us to think that we need uh, to envision uh, uh, a change of paradigm, uh, a deep change of paradigm involving the entire population at all levels. And this starts, of course, from the big cities because what they do uh, will have an enormous impact on the, on the uh, all, all the regional uh, organization of, uh, of waste, waste management. The strategy design that we decided to, for, for Palermo uh, has this motto, circular economy equals social engagement. We cannot uh, obtain uh, important uh, results if we do not, we are, if we are not able to involve all the societies and in particular the the poorest layers of society who could gain a lot from circular economy because they could become an actor an active actor and not only a passive actor of uh, of the production of waste but also for the 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 production of new products from the from the waste And of course, and of course, this leads also to the acknowledging of uh, of the role of uh, of creative and cultural industries 
of the social sector and university in the thinking object, business and consumption models. What we are doing in this period in particular is to look at the, um, at the networks, at the centers who are already working in Palermo about uh, circular economy, about recycling, reuse and so on. We uh, saw that there are at least four interesting points with which we could uh, uh, work not only at local level, but to enlarge the vision of the of the entire process also and to, and to create networks uh, with the rest of uh, Italy and the rest of the Mediterranean. From this point of view, we are also working uh, uh, to the implementation of our info point in Palermo to help enterprises, startups to uh, invest in circular economy. And we are doing this within the uh, so-called um, Cantieri Culturali della Ziza, which is uh, a sort of uh, neighborhood of, uh, of, of creative industries and creative uh, uh, organizations and cultural organizations. And we are working with the, in, in, in this field in particular with some uh, environmentalist association with Lega Ambiente Sicilia, uh, with the organization of enterprises, in particular the cooperative enterprises, uh, of course, we are we are uh, working also with the, these centers, with these fab labs, and the other points that are working on this. And we are still and we are already in in close relation with our friends in Jordan, who are doing the same thing uh, about the info point for uh, for Jordan. So the general goals is that of creating creating a clear framework for waste management that could involve as many players as possible and demonstrate how it is possible to close loops for circular economy by creating new value. The specific goals will be that of working on sectorial players, for example, building sector to demonstrate how to close the loops, supporting public administration through the proposal of specific collaboration, training, consultancy, and through the promotion of various projects, and supporting startups and, and SMEs who want to invest in the transition and circular economy. Uh, how will be measured about our uh, target, about our goals? Uh, in particular, looking at the number of SMEs or startups that we will be, will be able to support with technical training uh, and with a, a finance project, the number of circular economy products created and the number of projects on local circular economy and social engagement engagement promoted in particular in this respect we are already working also with the public administration to create uh, uh, frameworks in which it will be more, much easier to convince people to work with them and to create much more little interest in positive to create a positive movement towards uh, uh, the reuse and uh, 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 refurbishing and so on. These are the organization with which we started our, uh, we, we, we organized our SWOT and pest analysis in Palermo in September. And there are uh, um, as association of designer there are uh, enterprises of uh, uh, reuse uh, and uh, you know, that are spe special light and circular economy, and then the environmental organization, Lega Ambiente, and the enterprise organization. So thank you, and uh, we will uh, uh, continue. In particular, we would like to create, uh, uh, as soon as possible, some connections between these actors I already told you, and, for example, uh, some of the initiatives that you are uh, making in, in, in Prato, because also in Palermo, with Lega Ambiente, there are a lot of interesting uh, initiatives that could be linked and that could have much 
um, much more impact, at least in the Italian scene of, uh, of circular economy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Alessandro. Thank you. You have shared an important message, an important idea, like uh, involving all the society. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce the municipality of Tunis, beautiful, uh, uh, such as uh, Palermo, with Leila Ben Gassem. Uh, Tunis is an incredible city full of intense uh, scents and colors but also full of innovation and ideas. So, Leila, tell us more about uh, uh, your city. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Sure. Uh, so, we are here at the Municipality of Tunis. I'm with uh, Mr. Majdi Hinteti. He is the head of uh, waste management and leads InnoMedApp uh, implementation. Madame Soar Sesi, who is in charge of international cooperation. And Madame Sanet Lili, uh, she's the elected city councillor chair of Environment Committee and will be making our presentation today, which I will share immediately. Can you see our presentation? Yep. Okay. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome all uh, uh, partners of uh, this uh, uh, conference. I'm uh, Senet Lili, elected city board uh, councillor, environment uh, committee chair. Uh, municipality of Tunis, uh, partner, uh, project partner uh, for uh, capital of Tunisia, of Tunisia with uh, 610 and 915. Uh, inhabitants, over 30,136 uh, uh, hectares and 50 districts. Innovate up a geographical focus district of Medina, historical urban uh, quart uh, quarters with uh, over uh, 500 artisans, production workshops. Uh, municipality of Tunis uh, initiated zero waste Medina awareness activities in uh, 2019 with the involved all activity community members. Medina was uh, founded in year 698. Central Medina is about 296 hectares. UNESCO heritage site uh, since uh, 1989 with about uh, 20,000 uh, 20, Inhabitants, inhabitants today. Uh, your survey and the uh, failed findings. Um, in the first meeting with the uh, stakeholders to burn, uh, to bring, to bring them uh, uh, in board in project implement in implementation, and use uh, research institute. And in the second survey to identify circular economy opportunity, opportunities in culture, industry, and the in the Medina. In the third, uh, mapping of uh, historical urban abandoned uh, buildings. Uh, and uh, meeting with circular economy uh, startups to present identified uh, opportunities and discuss implementation challenges. Uh, finally, um, up uh, scaling project uh, exhibitation, uh, filed visit uh, potential reuse uh, uh, of uh, informal historical uh, buildings, workshop and specification documents for restoration and uh, shop scenes. Uh, progress so far. Uh, exhibition of innovate, innovate uh, prototype by your uh, youth, uh, youth uh, lead startups, uh, artisan workshop, waste reuse opportunity analysis, uh, future thinking thinking uh, workshop, uh, imagining uh, zero waste Medina, uh, reflections and uh, future activities. Um, in, um, in the first historical uh, buildings, in-depth research uh, on potential uh, repurposing 
of an artisan uh, fund, fund, uh, fund, uh, and uh, and delusion uh, uh, economic cultures uh, brain, a brainstorming uh, workshop with the city officials uh, and start start up to brainstorm uh, uh, clusters in the Medina and finally uh, Ecole de la Propriété launch uh, innovate app workshops in Ecole de la Propriété and cover it into a circular economy uh, prototype uh, laboratory laboratory um, thank you thank you very much and uh, stop sharing Thank you, uh, thank you, Leila. Thank you, Leila, for uh, your uh, presentation. Uh, let's go now uh, to Ebron uh, Nablus with Baher Dedik from uh, the Birzeit uh, University. Uh, can you shed up? Can you shed some light on the integration of the Innomed strategy on uh, Ebron and Nablus? Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Sure. Okay, I will share my screen. Good. Can you, can you see? Yeah. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Bahar Dikedik from Birzeit University in Palestine. I will be presenting uh, strategies of both Hebron and Nablus cities. I will start by showing the logic uh, behind setting uh, this strategy. The, Palest uh, the Palestinian CCI sector has an important role among various domestic industries because of its role in promoting the narration and culture of the Palestinian people. The industry has also been a critical part of the local tourism sector that is built on historic Palestine's location, history and religious significance for the three monotheistic religions. Some segments of the Palestinian cultural and creative industries date back thousands of years and have contributed considerably to the local economy. We have checked interrelations by studying existing policies and practices on promoting circular economy and creative creativity. The research found that local Palestinian market is still promising if SMEs can change their strategy of product development and customer segmentation. Research also showed that CCI SMEs have a great potential in both tourism and households goods this potential shall be empowered by new developments of practical, usable, well-produced and price-competing products. For example, there are huge opportunities in the fields of educational tools, home and kitchenware, fashion and toys that can all be produced based on recycled waste. We have also checked circularity models by studying categorization of local CCI SMEs. The research found that Nablus and Hebron CCI SMEs are using common waste materials like plastic, textile, wood and furniture, carton and cardboards and others. Also, official registry showed that main resources of solid waste in West Bank are households, agro-waste industries and construction. The conclusion from studying interrelations and circularity models is that CCI sector can be significantly revitalized by developing a clear, smooth and sustainable supply chains of wasted materials from the existing sources in addition to building the capacity of SMEs in innovation, research, recycling, marketing, design, production and pricing. Collaboration with key stakeholders will definitely help in achieving the vision by more support from national and public bodies like 
EQA, Chamber of Commerce, universities and media to prepare the ground for a sustainable ecosystem for the purpose of promoting and overcoming obstacles that had been highlighted by SMEs like export, IP law enforcement, public awareness and tax exemptions. We have set the same strategy for Hebron and Nablus cities uh, as follows, as you can see in the uh, house diagram. The motto for both cities will be sustaining history for sustainable future. The vision is creative and cultural industries are reusing existing resources and bringing cultural industries to our daily lives needs. The general objective of the strategy will be revitalizing creative and cultural industries through innovation and circular economy models and cross-border cooperations. This objective can be achieved by more specific objectives. One, developing clear, smooth, and sustainable supply chains of wasted materials from the existing sources. Two, clustering capacity enhancements of SMEs in innovation, research, recycling, marketing, design, production, and pricing. Three, encouraging key stakeholders to prepare the ground for a sustainable ecosystem for the purpose of promoting and overcoming obstacles standing in front of this sector. Four, promoting the sector by awareness campaigns. Five, cross-border cooperation schemes in innovation, external knowledge inclusion, and clustering with EU cities. We have set a measurable target for each goal. For instance, for the goal of developing sustainable supply chains of wasted materials, we will have at least two supply chains of waste types that have been set and operated in each city. For the clustering capacity enhancement of SMEs goal, we will have at least 15 CCI SMEs in each city that have been trained and proposed new products. For encouraging the key stakeholders to prepare the ground for a sustainable ecosystem, we will have at least one MOU signed with one key stakeholder in each city. And for the awareness campaigns, we will have at least one awareness campaign that has been launched with cooperation with one key stakeholder in each city. And for the cross-border cooperation schemes, it will be advised by the project leader considering the outcomes and the COVID global situation. Thank you very much. This was the strategy for Hebron and Nablus cities. So thank you, Baher. Thank you. I love your motto, uh, sustainable history for a sustainable future. This is the main uh, idea of the transgenerational pact. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. Our next and uh, last speaker of the InnoMed partner, uh, uh, partners panel is uh, Hea Deib from the Future Pioneers. Uh, Hea, please take us to Irbid, that was home uh, to Greek, Romans, and the Islamic settlers, who in turn they left behind uh, significant architectures and uh, uh, sites for all the humanity. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Lorenzo, for this excellent facilitation and uh, the effort that you are made, and it's a pleasure being part of this. Uh, Conference. I will screen my. I will share my screen now. I think you can see the screen now. We can. Oh, we can. We can now. Sure. Excellent. Uh, so again, thank you, Lorenzo, and of course to my colleagues in the Innovate Up project. Uh, my name is Ihab Reid, and I'm representing Future Revenue today. And I would like to start uh, talking about this organization, which is now leading the communication part of the Innovate Up project. Uh, uh, it was established in 2012, and it's specialized with empowering community members to overcome the poverty. And this uh, this is done through various means, including the including building their capacities, raising the public awareness, promoting the SMEs uh, in the educational, the health, the social, and even the environmental sectors. And we focus in the organization on uh, capacitating, capacitating the women, youth, and the marginalized group. Uh, over the years, we have been working under six pillars. 
uh, including the socioeconomic empowerment of the groups, of the marginalized group, women, youth, and girls. We're also working with the green economy and climate change adaptation. We have been also integrating our work within the environmental conservation and to promote the environmental sustainable practices, including water and waste management. We're also working under the civil engagement for women, youth, and also the marginalized group and the community dialogue and conflict resolution, as well as the solid waste management as one of the major pillars that Future Burning is working within. Uh, we also, as I said in the beginning, we are the partners of the Inuit Up project, and we have strong experiences in, in circular economy because we have done previous initiatives, including one of the largest organic composting sites in cooperation with the government of Jordan and also local communities, and in addition to implementing sorting projects, cooperation with the Greater Amman municipality. So what we have achieved uh, of, uh, so far in the Inuit Up project, we have uh, completed uh, a very detailed communication and visibility plan. Also, we have an active and effective, I would say, uh, a set of media outlets. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to visit the Inuit Up uh, uh, social media outlets to learn more about the activities that is, that is being conducted by the different partners and to learn more about the circular economy and how it is integrated within the small and medium enterprises. We have also completed the assessment of the circular economy situation in Jordan. And, and here we have investigated the situation in means of the SMEs and the policies that are available uh, in Jordan to support the, the, those SMEs to, to do the circular economy. We have uh, the best analysis, the political, uh, environmental, social, and technological analysis. Uh, and this has been done uh, using a, 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 a workshop uh, where we have invited all stakeholders uh, to, in, to understand from them and to learn from them what are the various dimensions that they think uh, it should be uh, tackled in order to strengthen the circular economy in Jordan. There was a lot of interviews performed and of course meetings uh, that have been conducted so far in addition to the awareness workshop uh, about uh, the SMEs which was conducted in urban city that you have started with introducing uh, Lorenzo and uh, indeed we have uh, we are now establishing the info points that will act as uh, a hub for the people who are trying to enhance and strengthen their SMEs and the circular economy work to find what are the uh, financial tools available so they can uh, build uh, on and do a, a better uh, work in this uh, direction. Uh, uh, saying this, uh, I would like to, to shed some light on the research result that we have achieved so far, <coughs> because we have, uh, based on the, on the huge amount of information that we have collected from various stakeholders, we have found that there's still a lack of knowledge uh, about the concept, the methodology of the circular economy in Jordan in general. And this is something that we think that it's a barrier, a barrier, and we need to tackle very carefully in order to, to have this concept mainstreamed into the different sectorial and sub-sectorial level. In addition to that, there, there is, of course, a limitation in the infrastructure itself that should support the circular economic project and even the small and medium enterprises. And when I'm saying here infrastructure, I'm, I mean the legislations, law, procedures, the standards, uh, and even uh, the infrastructure itself. So this is, of course, all connected with the budget allocations for this specific uh, uh, concept because uh, we need uh, to strengthen the budget allocations in order to move ahead with this concept in Jordan. Other uh, uh, results that we have uh, found is related to the incentive and the taxes uh, that are issued uh, by the government of Jordan and how we can use these and work uh, with these in order to improve uh, the circular economy in Jordan. The market uh, for creative industries, of course, still remains small in scale, and it has a lot of uh, difficulties in having the access to the international uh, uh, panorama. This is something that has to be tackled, and uh, one of the main results that we have uh, also achieved, or let's say understood that we have competences and skill uh, in, in means of waste management industry. However, 
Still, we need to find the linkage between these skills and the competences between the waste management and the circular economy. 92%, by the way, of the surveyed SMEs, they have confirmed uh, that they are funding their SMEs from their own private resources. And this, of course, uh, highlight the, 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 the need to have different uh, financial mechanisms in order to, to, to aid them in their work and to expand their work. And of course, there was also 8% of the SMEs, they have declared that they are using the public and mixed uh, uh, financial resources as a means to uh, move uh, with their uh, work. All of these results are showing that uh, more, uh, more consideration to the financial resources is needed here in Jordan. If we look to the coverage, the local coverage domain, we will find that 61% of those SMEs, they have a local coverage domain, while 29% they have a regional coverage. And this is something that we should learn from to enhance the regional exchange of information. And the Inuit you know, uh, you know, project is a clear example of how we can uh, make uh, this exchange of knowledge and expertise between the Mediterranean uh, countries and to, to build this concept and move it uh, to the right direction. Uh, the, for, for the uh, employment, we have found that 39% of the employees uh, <clears throat> are hired. Uh, you will find, I'm sorry, you will find two to three employees hired uh, in, the, in those SMEs, while, uh, while less than one employee uh, will, will be found in the majority of the SMEs. And those numbers are also very low if we will consider uh, uh, solving the issue of the employment. What we are going to do in I'm the sorry. future... I'm yeah. sorry. In case yes. you, you want to uh, share the presentation, we are just uh, we are on the first page since the beginning. So in case oh, you want to share uh, with us, uh, you can go in full screen. But what was good? What was good to hear you? Ah, okay, uh, I'm sorry. I thought that because I was moving with the slide, so I thought it is moving. But I will try to share. Yeah, but for us, for us, it's nice listening to you. Ah, so okay. it was clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, go, go ahead, go ahead, and uh, Vincenzo is gonna do it for you. Yeah. So I was actually in the in the last slide. I hope it's now uh, on at the screen. Uh, to speak about the future activities and th that we are aiming uh, to conduct. So we are aiming, of course, to strengthen the production and performance of the CCR SMEs in Jordan uh, so we can convince more uh, targeted uh, organizations and individuals to adopt the circular economic principles through providing access uh, to technical training and innovation. Uh, indeed, having more access to the financial resources is something that we are aiming to through the info points that we are now developing and uh, we are now uh, in the process of, fee of uh, providing uh, the information into this platform, which will be uh, very, very soon. And, I, and we think that this will help a lot uh, the Jordanian SMEs to understand what are the opportunities that are available so they can uh, use it well. And we think that this will also help uh, at a regional level through the Inuit Up project. To facilitate the access to raw material, something else that we, we are aiming to through a signing came around of understanding with larger industry here in Jordan. Of course, advocating and lobbying among the relevant authority to start to you know to look to, to the legislation, to review it, to understand the gaps, and you know to fill in the gaps through enhancing the legal and, and financial uh, directions. Uh, this, this is, will be very helpful and very supportive to enhancing the CCI SMEs in Jordan and, of course, providing the opportunities to exchange the experiences and market linkages at national and international level. It's something that we are aiming for, and the Inuit Up project will help a lot to, to, to fill in the gaps in this specific point. So, uh, I, uh, by this, I will stop and I will thank all of you for the listening. Thank you, thank you, Hab. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to our InnomedUp uh, partners, panelists. Uh, now it's my turn. Let me briefly take you to the coffee break uh, with our uh, marvelous region, worldwide known for its fine art and uh, the natural uh, heritage. Uh, thank you even to uh, to 
uh, Vincenzo. Vincenzo can probably now uh, share some uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, pages about the Reco Festival, the, uh, some videos and uh, images about the Reco Festival. Uh, so great, great. Um, uh, we are in uh, such uh, uh, a great and uh, as I as I mentioned before, worldwide known uh, uh, region, but. Uh, uh, um, this region is also known for its positive impact uh, on the competitive environment, innovation, uh, manufacturing, and uh, important economic activity are in uh, Tuscany. But uh, let me take you uh, in uh, Prato. You know, the city where the principle of uh, circular economy are uh, around any corner of, uh, of the city. The city where they don't need any uh, academy to celebrate the circular economy because uh, in Prato the circular economy is within the city inside uh, his DNA since uh, uh, since uh, centuries and um, I wish to uh, thanks uh, Valerio Barberis and uh, Alessandro Colombo for uh, uh, suggesting me as a guest speaker of uh, uh, this part of the conference they should be here uh, to tell us about uh, uh, their festival, together with uh, Benedetta Squitieri and uh, other representative of the municipality. Uh, Valerio and Alessandro, Alessandro is the art director of the, the festival, uh, but uh, also the other representative of uh, uh, Tuscan region and Toscana promozione had uh, an extraordinary intuition about the festival. Uh, not going with the formal conference, uh, uh, not a top-down uh, symposium, uh, uh, but uh, mostly a, a, a pop festival where uh, people, uh, we, we're, we're like uh, uh, a society, uh, um, uh, um, could meet uh, important issues about circular economy uh, through culture, creativity, and uh, through uh, direct uh, contact, direct connection with the uh, with factories. So originally we um, had three days of activities, uh, uh, talks, uh, shows, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and concert, uh, um, artistic performances, uh, and uh, international seminars with, uh, you know, with even important guests uh, as uh, Professor Braungart, uh, the father of uh, the cradle to cradle approach, but also Ursula de Castro, the activist of fashion revolution. So those and those and of uh, international uh, speaker. Um, uh, the program in the end uh, um, uh, was uh, became even stronger and more pervasive uh, after the uh, you know the forced uh, COVID nineteen rethinking we had. Uh, as uh, most of you uh, rethink the, the the program and uh, that was great that was uh, an extraordinary encounter with radios uh, and social medias uh, when no one was uh, thinking about the new emerging uh, social media clubhouse, you know, in Tuscany we did clubhouse, uh, radios and social medias uh, uh, together, an incredible uh, wide uh, on the air program from March uh, till uh, to, to December. And, uh, and uh, we, um, I want to mention especially open factories uh, because uh, you know uh, this is the place uh, where we are going to celebrate and project creative uh, creative industries uh, cre and cultural and, and creative industries uh, and culture and creativity uh, through open factories uh, meet the circular uh, economy uh, one entire month of amazing performances, uh, live streaming, concert, uh, inside uh, the most uh, uh, important and, and, and also uh, um, uh, suggestive companies of the uh, textile district. Uh, we had, uh, uh, and we and our audience, we had uh, a continuous flow of, of emotion and uh, unbelievable beauty, you know, even for us of the crew, even for us uh, uh, working every day with the artists, with panelists, with the, with the program was an emotion and we always text uh, uh, um, uh, 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 how uh, unbelievable was that uh, 
the, the beauty of uh, the, the performances. And uh, so we had uh, a lot of stimuli, uh, um, a lot of uh, interpretations, uh, and, uh, and uh, Open Factory was uh, a continuous, uh, was and, and is, because you can find it uh, on, uh, on social media, so you can find it on the internet, uh, is with us and is accessible for everybody. Um, um, uh, was a continuous engine of uh, ideas uh, for the uh, promotion of the transition to the, uh, the circular economy. So, you know, um, nothing more to, uh, to talk about. Uh, you have to feel it, you have to experience it, you have to uh, judge it on, 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 uh, uh, for yourself. I can only uh, wish you a good coffee break. Um, and uh, uh, with uh, our extraordinary uh, open factory. So uh, take your coffee, relax now, but uh, uh, leave the, the audio on and leave the, the video on. Uh, you can find the full program on our social media, Reco Festival, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, all the, the whole performance, uh, uh, the program on... Uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. So see you in uh, in uh, uh, less than half an hour. Uh, see you at uh, 12 here uh, for the roundtable with the NECBC Med and uh, other uh, projects. So everyone have a good time.
Hi everyone and welcome back to the Innomed App conference. Uh, during the coffee break uh, we have seen and probably even uh, danced with some uh, of our extraordinary moment of the Reco uh, Open Factory uh, uh, section. Uh, as, as you have seen, uh, creativity and culture are perfect to promote uh, the transition uh, to the circular economy. We have seen uh, many, many artists and many um, uh, factories, uh, uh, Naomi Berril at Lanificio Rossi, Luca Scarlini at uh, Marco Lucchesi, Riccardo Onori at, in uh, Manteco, uh, Mancuso and Brunello in, uh, uh, in, uh, our, in, in a kind of urban uh, forest, uh, Alessandro Lanzoni and Simone Graziano uh, uh, at Lanificio uh, Luigi Riccieri, uh, and many, many, many other. And uh, you have seen uh, the incredible uh, uh, speakeasy, uh, the, the, the final part was a speakeasy uh, at uh, uh, Gomatex. So please uh, take time uh, and uh, uh, enjoy the uh, uh, video uh, on uh, our uh, social uh, on our social media. All right. So um, uh, it is now my pleasure to start uh, the roundtable with uh, uh, again with uh, uh, Sofia. Sofia, uh, welcome back from the National Technical University of, of uh, Athens. Um, we mm. have uh, many topics, many things to share, and uh, and uh, but I know you know you will be um, committed with uh, uh, your time management. <laughs> uh, and uh, Sophia, uh, I, if you agree, I would like to start with you. Uh, if uh, uh, could you please uh, introduce your project and help us to understand. Uh, uh, what kind of small medium enterprises your the project aims at uh, and uh, which is uh, in the end the, uh, their value added thank you lorenzo let me starting saying that uh, inomedap is working by studying the cities of in mediterranean uh, area we try to surpassing the difficulties caused by the delicate social and geopolitical conditions through the cross-border collaboration and friendship between uh, the partnership. As all we know, there are disparities between cities in the north and the south of Mediterranean Sea. But uh, our starting point is that the Mediterranean cities can share their common uh, cultural characteristics and uh, work together by building on their common identity and by integrating into their productive schemes the principles of circular economy. Mediterranean cities can create resilient urban environments and communities, establishing a supportive framework for cultural creative industries, uh, small medium enterprises, clustering. Uh, Mediterranean cities face the problem of uh, overwhelming the waste production, demanding effective and urgent uh, uh, actions. Circular economy principles may offer a solution to this problem. As recently, a remarkable percentage of urban production in city centers is uh, represented by cultural and creative industries. The involvement of uh, cultural and um, creative industries in circular economy uh, is of a great importance. Inomedap proposes to work with uh, cultural and creative industries, CCIs, to shift local urban economies towards a circular production and consumption paradigm, including optimal use of material resources, innovation enhancement for SMEs, knowledge transfer among cities, social inclusion and citizens engagement. The project is working at cross-border level, supporting both technological developments, such as technological informative platforms, modern procedure of upcycling, smart circularity tools and roadmaps, socio-urban circularity workshops, and traditional recycling practices. Um, I can continue if you like, but uh, perhaps it is better to stop here. <laughs> and uh, 
Okay, uh, I think we should ask uh, uh, to Frederick uh, uh, more or less the same. Frederick Gallo Salent uh, uh, is the waste, uh, uh, the waste uh, from the waste agency of Catalonia. He is the lead beneficiary of uh, the Circle project, and uh, would be nice uh, uh, to know uh, from Frederick. Uh, um, the the uh, which kind of uh, um, uh, uh, small medium enterprise are in uh, your project, and uh, again, uh, if you can tell us the their value added. Uh, well, if you let me, I I I, I will introduce um, a, a brief sure. uh, outlook of of the project for sure. the people who doesn't know it. Um, well. Uh, the, youth, uh, the the problem that, that this project uh, try to address is, is, is youth unemployment. And uh, you know, the, the rate in the Mediterranean countries is on average three times higher than, than the adult unemployment. And there are also unemployed women that are in disadvantaged position due to gender violence, uh, lack of education, etc. Uh, as a consequence, poverty and social exclusion have become critical issues for those sectors uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, on the other hand, uh, waste management represents uh, a keystone to preserve Mediterranean cities and coastal areas in order to guarantee a healthy and sustainable living environment uh, for these communities. Um, according to the European Compost Network, uh, the total amount of bio waste generated only in the European Union has the potential to generate almost 100,000 100, new jobs. Well, uh, CERCLES, which is, uh, stands for uh, Supporting Circular Economy Opportunities for Employment and Social Inclusion, um, this project will develop training, qualification, and job creation in the circular economy for un unemployed young people of 18 to 24 years um, uh, known, uh, without education, which is known as uh, NEET, NEET and women of all ages uh, in risk of exclusion. But by specifically supporting the creation of companies that take shares of the selective collection of the bio waste generated in hotels, campsites, schools, restaurants, etc., Composting it in a small scale, mm -hmm. obtaining uh, high quality compost and use it in agriculture. That is uh, closing the circle of the organic matter. Um, Bio waste collection and management entities involved in composting will benefit from increased workload, better separation at source of waste that will increase their profitability and more competent, competent uh, training staff. Uh, this initiative uh, will be tested through seven pilots in the island of Andros in Greece, in Akaba in Jordan, uh, Ramallah in Palestine, in Palestine uh, Puglia in Italy, Villa Seca in Catalonia, Biblos in Lebanon and Biblos, sorry, and, and Bizarte in Tunisia. By working on the integration among the uh, key stakeholders from the hospitality, food retail, and household health sectors, and which uh, will de uh, will de be develop multiple approach like mentoring, employment advisory support, entrepreneurship promotion, tailor-made training, and job placements. <laughs> And this, including the setting of a small uh, and low cost technology composting plant, except in Puglia and Ramallah, where there are already existing plants. Um, to increase the quality of the bio waste arriving, arriving to those plants, there will be awareness campaigns for citizens and the hosp hospitality sector. The project will support the creation of new green enterprises mm -hmm. via sub renting, training, and mentorship thus presenting an avenue for job creation. Circles will also promote a green level, so sectors like hospitality and food retail will benefit from positive recognition by their social and environmental responsibility, and also from having more committed and trained staff. Um, the 10 partners of the project uh, will bring together their expertise related to training and labor insertion of vulnerable groups bio waste management and circular economy strategies, business models and agriculture and social economy, complementing each other in terms of expertise and experience um, to uh, implement the, all the work packages of the project, which are uh, management, communication, circular economy partnerships and strategies for the vulnerable, vulnerable groups, 
training and job requirement, implementation of business models, and sustainability, replicability, and capitalization for circular economy employment. Nice. Overall, it's estimated that 107 new jobs will be created directly to the project and this project and I'm sorry and the job creation is expected to increase by 20% in the next in the uh, 5 years after the the, the phasing out of the project the project um, can also help providing uh, empirical evidence needed by for informing policy making and developer and developing further this inclusive economic economic model along all the mediterranean region the engagement of authorities, civil society, organizations, the private sector, and the local entities will be key to set up all the activities. In this sense, as an initial step, the project partners have associated local stakeholders as associated partners of circles with a commitment to be part of the local strategic alliance set up in each partner region. Furthermore, to ensure sustainability beyond the project duration, a policy toolkit for circular economy, employment and training will assemble all the results and important lessons uh, learned from the pilots, incorporating the different regional perspectives and will serve as a tool to leverage evidence-based policy making uh, of successful circular economy business models. And also, uh, finally, the creation of the Mediterranean Circles Network, including all the project partners uh, and associated partners in cooperation with the local alliance to act as a vector for policy making, replication, and dissemination through the Mediterranean basin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Frederick. Uh, uh, Anna, Anna Ibanez de Arolias, uh, Regional uh, Activity Center from uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production. Uh, she's the lead be beneficiary of uh, Stand Up Project. Uh, if you if you can spend some word uh, on your project and uh, uh, if you can tell us uh, what kind of financial support your project will provide to uh, enterprises. Thank you, Lorenzo, and thank you for for well for inviting us to to take part to to this event. Uh, we are very glad to to be with you today and to contribute uh, to 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 this conversation. So, the Stand Up Project is a project that is focusing on the textile and fashion sector, and the main objective is to enhance uh, a scalable, replicable, and inclusive circular economy ventures um, by developing a, a business support ecosystem and an ecosystem uh, um, supporting also the, the innovation and technology and technology transfer the objective is to to give uh, to support the transformation and the transition to the of the textile and fashion industry to a more uh, circular and green uh, uh, model. So the project, uh, let me very briefly ex explain it, uh, uh, well, works in, in five countries, uh, Tunisia, Egypt, uh, Lebanon, Spain, and Italy. And uh, it's a project that um, will provide uh, technical and financial support to entrepreneurs, uh, youth innovators, uh, students from university, but also to already existing uh, SMEs that want to transform their, their business model into a more circular and, and green business or developing new products, circular products. So this will be our our target, let's say, in terms of uh, the, the actors that will uh, benefit from, from our support. So um, concerning the financial support that we will provide them, um, this support is will be linked uh, to the different sections or, or activities of the project uh, on business support, innovation, and IPR, intellectual property rights. So we will have bad, uh, vouchers 
mm. that should support entrepreneurs and companies to make connections in another countries internationally. So we will try to, uh, we will set up the soft landing vouchers to support them to, for instance, a Tunisian entrepreneur or company to go to Italy to make connections and to, to, to meet with uh, other companies, potential providers and so on. And then we will have the, the vouchers that are um, related to the eco-innovation. So we will foster eco-innovation uh, through open innovation activities and through a, a technology transfer marketplace. And based on, on these uh, two approaches, we will set up a scheme of, of vouchers um in in each country so to facilitate the or to provide this uh financial or economical support to develop this innovation so for the first of la for the soft landing vouchers we will have uh 20 vouchers in total so uh five uh four per country uh each voucher for 4500 euros for the eco innovation vouchers we are, we will also have five voucher four vouchers per country for uh 2000 uh, 20000 euros and then we will have also the vouchers related to the IPR to the intellectual property rights support so we will also have eight vouchers in this case per country for an amount of 5000 euros and finally, uh, we will also set up uh, business awards for those uh, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs that are able to really, um, you know, make a, a, that have a good business project and that have a, a high potential to, 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 to transform and to support the transition of, of this sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lorenzo, uh, Lorenzo Incagli from uh, Confindustria Toscana Nord, uh, partner uh, TexMed Alliance project. Uh, um, I would, uh, we, we probably uh, uh, would know, um, uh, would be interesting in knowing uh, uh, in which stage of uh, production and how the small medium enterprises of uh, uh, of your project could integrate uh, the circular uh, principles the mic okay Good. Our project uh, encompasses uh, SMEs of all segments of the textile and clothing value chain. So mm -hmm. uh, fibers, yarns, fabrics, finishing, and as well uh, as final products. In each segment, there are companies that include circular economy activities in their production uh, cycle. Uh, in particular, fibers produced using uh, industrial and or agricultural waste, yarns from uh, regenerated fibers or used fabrics, and also fabrics from recycled fabrics, of course, and final uh, products uh, like as, uh, such as uh, uh, garments made by discarded remnants. Um, let's say that in terms of uh, uh, circular economy, principle we are helping uh, uh, these companies to find uh, suitable occasions to to trade uh, in uh, leftovers for fabrics and yarns mostly so we are uh, putting together textile companies from uh, the northern side of the uh, mediterranean basin such as uh, of course italy greece and spain with uh, mostly uh, garment producers from the southern Basin, which is for our project, as you probably know, uh, Tunisia, Egypt, uh, Palestine, and uh, and Jordan. And uh, um, we 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 set up for for them to 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 help this kind of trade a, an FB group platform. Which is about to start right in uh, in these days. So we 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 really really think that companies are eager to, especially in these uh, tough times, to have uh, such uh, occasions to to trade together. 
So it's, it's not only a, a technological help, but also some, something that could uh, uh, be helpful for them in terms of, uh, of commerce. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, I hope we'll have time for a second turn. And, uh, and uh, Miriam, Miriam uh, from the Textile Research Institute, ITEX, uh, she goes with the creative, creative not creative, but creative uh, project. And uh, it would be nice to know uh, what kind of uh, uh, enterprises your uh, project aims and uh, even uh, uh, by you, which kind uh, of value added? Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting uh, me to join uh, in Nomad App Conference. My name is Miriam, uh, and uh, I am uh, from ITEX. ITEX is a research textile institute located in the Valencian region in Spain. Uh, I am going to explain a bit, very brief, what is Creative Project. We are a partnership of 11 entities, uh, companies, research centers, chambers of commerce, regional and uh, national and, uh, uh, and uh, regional public authorities, as well as associations. Uh, um, Creative Project aims at boosting the creativity by using innovation in traditional sectors as, as the textile, clothing, footwear, and leather in the Mediterranean countries. Um, in our case, companies from Spain, Italy, Tunisia, Palestine, Egypt, and Jordan could uh, directly benefit from uh, creative uh, results, as for example, direct grants and uh, from the collaboration between uh, artists, creative uh, entities, research, and cultural entities to rebuild the traditional sectors through the creation of labs in each participant country. Uh, but, uh, with this kind of, uh, of labs, uh, the idea is uh, uh, to reinforce um, uh, the, the companies and give them uh, added value uh, um, uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, the cross-border collaboration uh, between SMEs, uh, research centers, and creative hubs to develop uh, projects of new and innovative products and services and fashioning new business models. Um, the idea is to support them with uh, uh, grants. Uh, this kind of grants uh, will come directly to them to develop uh, uh, projects uh, in collaboration between uh, the North and the South. And uh, the idea is to um, work between uh, them to develop any innovative uh, product, an innovative idea uh, with uh, the, uh, the inclusion of uh, the creativity, uh, but as well the inclusion of sustainable uh, principle. Good. Miriam, and uh, now uh, let's go to uh, Unido. I would uh, first time know more about uh, 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 Unido, and uh, with uh, uh, Benoit uh, Wal uh, Watelet. Sorry for <laughs> the name. And um, um, if you can tell more about about more about the organization. And uh, even uh, by your side, uh, um, the impact of the project on uh, small, medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. Sure. So thanks, Lorenzo, and uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, panelists and participants. So UNIDO is a um, so UN organization, uh, HQ based in Vienna. And uh, our mandate is focused on uh, uh, industrial development in supporting uh, emerging countries in this transition. Uh, as part of the SwitchMed program, uh, so UNIDO is the leading uh, entity uh, in partner with uh, SCP RAC uh, as well as UNEP and encompass uh, different uh, components. So, just to give you an overview of uh, SwitchMed, so it's a program started in uh, 2014 
funded by the EU and co-funded by the International Cooperation Agency and the Catalan government with a global financial, financial of uh, 40 million euros. The objective of the program is to accelerate the adoption of uh, sustainable consumption and production as a strategy lying in the earth of the inclusive transition to circular economy. SwitchMed works in eight countries, bringing together public and private stakeholders to realize the circular economy transition, having at its core the creation of environmental, social and economic value via eco-design process and eco-innovation. So the key idea of the program is to promote the development of an ecosystem of public and private stakeholders supporting uh, the circular economy transition. This ecosystem is built to enable innovation and knowledge capital, as well as to promote its transfer through networking and capacity building activities. This is the reason why SwitchMed is designed around four thematic areas. The first one, industry and service provider. Second, startup and entrepreneurs. Third, policy and networking. So with regard to SMEs, SwitchMed declined system thinking in supporting the private sector by cascading changes within global value chain, triggering demand supply synergies and facilitating collaboration among different stakeholders. It also provides direct technical support and financial assistance to high demonstration impact productive activities, which are at the forefront of SCP and circular economy innovation. SwitchMed, SwitchMed also enables the creation of new green business model, offering direct support to incubation and early stage entrepreneurs. And last but not least, it also provides evidence-based policy making to fast track business driven eco innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Benoit. Uh, now I would like uh, to uh, go back to Sofia, but uh, uh, with, um, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, implementing the circular economy in, uh, in cities uh, uh, can uh, bring uh, incredible economic, social, environmental benefits. That's why most of uh, those projects are, uh, are uh, active, you know. And uh, I would like to ask you and uh, ask the other panelists, uh, uh, the relation between uh, uh, organization and operation and the operation of the cities and the activities of your project. So which is the relation between uh, the, the organization of the city and the activities of uh, the project? I am oh, okay. Good. Because I was muted. So thank you, Lorenzo, for this uh, important uh, question. It is really important, at my opinion. Uh, the function of uh, med cities, at our opinion, will have an extensive positive impact by our project activities by InnoMedApp. The implementation of uh, circular economy procedures within cultural and creative industries uh, will improve waste management due to technological absorption and innovative uh, knowledge transfer. Consequently, Mediterranean cities will become more resilient ter territories, we think. Uh, we have uh, many the case studies, as you have seen already uh, in the previous uh, um, uh, section of uh, our conference. And uh, each city, Athens, uh, Prato, Palermo, um, Tunis, um, Hebron, uh, Nablus, and Erbil in uh, Jordan, um, can special case studies that will focus on specific areas in involved in these involved cities and on specific production cycles aiming uh, at involving selected uh, CCIs, cultural, um, creative cultural um, uh, um, 
uh, industries and SMEs, local communities and uh, important stakeholders. Uh, cultural uh, creative industries uh, will be encouraged to design innovative services and uh, or pro produce innovative products according to circular economy principles. Our project in OMEDAP aims to develop a label for these products that will reflect the concept of uh, zero waste for the participating cities and to connect also the city image with the products. Finally, um, our intention is to contribute in a cross-border networking between local communities and stakeholders from participating countries and to involve in circular economy procedures students, women and uh, marginalized groups in a way to promote civic engagement and uh, um, the urban integration of Inomedap uh, proposals. Thank you. So good, good, good. Uh, uh, Frederick, uh, the topic is uh, hot, so uh, the same for you. Um, uh, the relation between uh, the organization and the operation of the city and the activities of, uh, of your project. Because, you know, cities are, uh, uh, are uh, central for the uh, transition to the circular economy. Of course. Um, thank you, Lorenzo. Um, yes, this project circles uh, adds value through social contribution to the communities uh, where it's operating. Um, because uh, it, it addresses capital points of operation of a city in a city like uh, sustainable waste management, uh, as I mentioned before, which, uh, avoiding in, even in, a, in pilot scales, uh, the pilot scales of, of this project, many tons of organic waste um, to end up in, in landfills um, and generating jobs for a sector of unemployed people who, um, who, is, who are, uh, are at risk of poverty and social exclusion. So um, I think this is the, the main point of, of the project in, in this regard. Mm -hmm. um, um, and also you, you know, we can add that it's an incubator of business uh, and activities around, around waste, around organic waste. And that it currently in, in many regions of the Mediterranean is landfill or incinerated. Um, I, as I previously mentioned, um, only in the European Union is estimated that this sector can absorb and, and up to, up to 100,000 uh, jobs. So uh, this, this gives an idea of, of the importance of, of this subsector of, of waste. Mm, good, good, good. Thank you very much. Uh, Anna, uh, the same for you. Uh, the role of uh, cities uh, uh, on uh, uh, the, the role of organization and uh, the operation of the city in the activities of, uh, uh, of your project. Thank you, Lorenzo. So, well, at Stand Up, um, we don't really work with cities as a specific objective, but I think they will be clearly involved uh, within the project, especially when it comes to the, um, we have to prepare, uh, or we will prepare uh, three um, national um, roadmaps, uh, where before we will first see them roadmaps on how uh, policymakers, governments can support the transition of this uh, sector, but especially, how um, entrepreneurs, companies could be supported to, to become more circular or to develop new business models. And yes. of course- is, uh, I mean, cities in an extensive, uh, extensive meaning, you know? Uh, no, um, of course, even, of course. Even if you don't work directly on it. No, exactly. But I mean that w I think with these reports, we will be clearly inviting cities to to contribute, to give their point of view on how uh, this uh, policy framework could, could be improved and enhanced in order to support the development of, of these uh, circular businesses, circular business models. And I think clearly cities have a key role. Um, uh, for instance, in uh, in the management of of 
clothes or waste, no? Once uh, clothes are used and and use consumers usually or they are used to just throw them away to the garbage and this comes to the um uh to the system to the manage waste management system of cities so they can they could support this this change by setting up a, a collection system that can separate uh, uh, the the waste and or that can facilitate the the collection of of uh, textile waste so for me this is clearly a a, 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 a a main role or a main action that cities could uh, try to to develop in collaboration with uh, startups uh, to to develop such uh, models, uh, enhancing this management of of waste, but also on on production uh, instead of uh, with the three D uh, printing. Uh, maybe textiles uh, production can uh, come to the cities, can be done from cities, and the recycling of textiles, the production of new of clothes at local level is also, I think, something that in the next years can become more, more, more let's say, on the stream. And also with university and students, I think there's a huge uh, potential there. And I think uh, cities also should uh, try to to have a role in fostering and, and enhancing this this uh, this part, no? uh, with universities, designers, and so on. Sure, 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 sure. Thank you, thank you very much, Lorenzo. Uh, from uh, Confindustria Toscana Nord perspective. Uh, uh, the role of cities and the role of uh, your uh, and your role um, uh, on uh, on uh, the project. As for the project of uh, Anna, uh, also ours uh, doesn't have to do directly with uh, with cities administrations because it's. Uh, it's a project uh, with uh, business uh, entities like uh, like our organization. Yeah, cities, I mean, cities like uh, uh, again extensive meaning, you know, like uh, not uh, cities as uh, policymaker, government, or or like uh, just people living in the city, but like uh, um, all the actors uh, within the the cities. Well, let's say that for our point of view it's very important uh, to to deal with uh, with the administration uh, at uh, uh, city but also at the regional and national level to to help companies to deal with uh, uh, the wastes of driving from uh, textiles of course uh, but also in terms uh, of exchanging uh, best practices uh, inside uh, the Mediterranean uh, uh, basin. So we are uh, cooperating with uh, CETEX in, uh, in uh, Tunisia, uh, for instance, uh, or also with uh, the uh, German Arab Chamber of Commerce of uh, Alexandria in such, uh, in such, uh, uh, in such kind of, uh, of a job. So uh, let's say that uh, it's very important uh, to uh, cooperate uh, together with uh, uh, the public administrations to solve to solve the, 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 the waste problems uh, for uh, for the companies. So trying to to put the circular economy as a as a as an asset for. Uh, the companies instead of uh, uh, just uh, just a problem and uh, let's say that this is uh, of course uh, a, a one one of our uh, one of our goals for this project as well you are i think you are right yeah yeah good, good lorenzo thank you very much uh, miriam uh, the creative project and uh, uh, the role of uh, of cities again you know in the, the his uh, widest meaning. Thank you, Lorenzo. 
Uh, in the last activities of uh, Creative, it is aimed uh, to develop a new kind of uh, governance, uh, committing different stakeholders to adopt new models of business uh, through innovative public-private alliance involving institutional, economic and societal actors. Uh, this new governance model will demonstrate that traditional sectors can be revealed through a model of inclusive and effective co-design pathway between SMEs, designers, makers and social actors. Uh, for this reason, uh, one of the activities that uh, we want to perform uh, more at the end of the project execution is to develop an action plan uh, including uh, real activities uh, to influence policy makers. Uh, the idea is also to develop some uh, observatory, some uh, cluster groups in order to reinforce this part of, uh, of uh, this, uh, um, of uh, involving uh, the different actors of uh, cities uh, in order to be influenced and in order to transfer what, uh, what are the main results of creative uh, projects. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Benoit, uh, from uh, your uh, point of view in, uh, in, uh, in Vienna, you know, you work for poverty reduction, uh, uh, inclusive, glo uh, in cl inclusive globalization, uh, environmental sustainability, which uh, is the role of uh, uh, the city, uh, cities in general? Mm -hmm. So I may repeat to some of my colleagues uh, beforehand. So the projects which met directly does not address uh, organization of op or operation of the city directly. But what I can say is that on the other end, the switch made policy component uh, entails a dialogue with uh, at national level with uh, governance. And uh, the objective is to uh, roll out uh, what we so call national SCP, so sustainable and cleanup production action plans mm. that are uh, tailored for each and every country. On the other end, uh, the program aims to design a regional action plan uh, adopted by the Barcelona, Barcelona Convention for uh, Sustainable and Cleanup Production. And uh, over the past years, so national SCPs have been coupled with the development of pilot projects within um, the cities and industries, let's say. And uh, it has provided also a lot of uh, feedbacks and data for uh, policy development. So in this context, we can say that SwitchMed uh, promotes this uh, policy dialogue in two aspects. It can be like top down. So as I say, from a national um, uh, dialogue that can cascade into more uh, local regulations. But on the other end, we can see it also bottom up because uh, throughout the past years, we have um, throughout the SwitchMed platform, we created um, dialogues and uh, and information sharing with a lot of uh, local stakeholders. So just some figures, but um, over the last five years, more than 1,500 locals, uh, stakeholders were engaged in um, um, workshops and roundtables for policy dialogue. So throughout our activity, we also foster um, lifting up uh, proposals for uh, circular economy regulations that can benefit directly to citizens and the cities. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, let's go back to Sofia. Sofia, uh, we are trying to do the last uh, round of the, the table. Uh, and um, I would like to know, uh, or I mean, I would like to give you stimulus for tell us uh, which future and uh, uh, which is the biggest challenge of your project at the moment. Uh, and uh, uh, what do you think the best outcome for the project would be? Choose, choose uh, the main one. Okay. Uh, I would like to speak to you about the, uh, the target groups uh, and uh, the final beneficiaries of uh, our project. Um, our target groups uh, and entities um, are uh, the circular, um, the creative and circular um, industries uh, SMEs uh, that are um, um, selected by our research uh, researchers 
um, and um, I would like to to have some uh, collaboration in a higher educational um, level. Um, and uh, we have to uh, address to, um, um, uh, to unemployed and marginalized uh, people, mainly young people and women, uh, to regional and local authorities, uh, to uh, decision makers and uh, policy makers, and to the overall citizenship of uh, our cities. Um, we try to combine the, um, the 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 function and the um, um, the the um, the good uh, benefits from a circular economy with uh, the planification of uh, our cities and to propose some um, uh, special plans and uh, specific roadmaps uh, in uh, the geographic uh, level of course of the city and uh, with uh, some uh, products and practices uh, that uh, at our opinion are um, innovative as uh, the smart uh, bicycle and the, the smart uh, um, garbage uh, box and uh, some other uh, things and uh, some other um, ideas that we have and uh, that we are working on but uh, we think that um, uh, um, um, mo the most important tool uh, in order to um, obtain all these uh, benefits is the, the training and um, the the um, the activity uh, of uh, training uh, on uh, circular economy and uh, his uh, benefits uh, we have provided uh, special training for uh, circular uh, and uh, creative um, creative circular um, smes in order to learn more about uh, circular economy and uh, its uh, potential benefits um, we have provided, um, it was already, I think, uh, presented by our partner, uh, Birzeit University, uh, six uh, training activities that will um, um, take place in the participating cities. Uh, where local uh, um, creative and uh, cultural uh, industries, SMEs, at least uh, we think uh, 10 per each city, will participate actively. These SMEs will be encouraged to participate in the pilot clusters and submit proposals to be granted cross-border innovation vouchers. Inomidab considers necessary the involvement of experts in this training procedure and um, we will address uh, the following issues. The notion of circular economy and its role skills development uh, using innovative methods and tools for upcycling and uh, capacity building in on innovative business models and design for circularity training on InnoMedApp clustering tools. Um, InnoMedApp has um, um, a special budget for uh, his uh, um, um, uh, vouchers and uh, we have uh, provided um, uh, the 15 percent of uh, our total project budget uh, for this uh, for these uh, grants uh, we have three kind of uh, of grants grants uh, that will uh, provide it for um, uh, cal uh, creative cultural industries for design and production of innovative pro pro products and services using materials from uh, the pilot uh, testing of uh, the smart tools that um, uh, it was already mentioned, uh, the bicycle and uh, the garbage uh, bin. Uh, we have uh, cross-border mentorship vouchers that will give the possibility to participate in uh, uh, creative cultural industries to develop activities at uh, transnational cross-border level and to acquire uh, operational instruments in favor of SMEs innovation with the concept of uh, circular economy, of course. And uh, finally, uh, we have innovation vouchers 
that will give the possibility to participate um, cultural and the creative uh, industries to have access to industrial research and experimental development in high-tech systems. Um, that's it from me. Thank and if you. you have uh, any other question, I'm available to uh, to speak for. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. And uh, uh, if there are uh, comments, uh, uh, please uh, uh, interact with us on uh, uh, on social medias. Uh, let's move to uh, Frederick. And um, again, uh, uh, which uh, uh, future, which uh, uh, actual uh, biggest biggest challenges uh, of your project uh, at the moment, and uh, what do you think uh, your you know many outcomes, but which is the most important uh, outcome for your and and even for similar project? Uh, well, we sign with any uh, with the authority. Um, uh, the grant contract uh, we signed the, the last week, so it's uh, we are uh, we, uh, any activity has already uh, begun, and it's just the beginning of the two and a half year adventure, <laughs> if I may say so. Um, for the the challenge, uh, the main challenge uh, that I see is um, in order to set up all the activities of the project, which are many. Uh, we need the, the active involvement of all the local partners, of, of all the local uh, actors. Um, the, the, for example, um, the, 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 the civil society, uh, the, well, the local entities, uh, the authorities, and the private sector, of course. Um, it's it's a it's a big challenge, but um, I think it um, that the the constitution of uh, the commitment to for the constitution of the local strategy alliance, which is a part of, a part of the work package, um, in each partner region will will facilitate this 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 challenge. No. And for me, the, the main the main outcome uh, will be to to give uh, real employment to to these uh, 107 uh, people, new new jobs. And uh, for me, that I, I would think this will be the the key the key outcome of this project. Um, but of course, uh, after after the phase out of the project, uh, uh, we think we, we hope that it will it will scale up. And it can spread across all, all the Mediterranean region. Thank you, thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, Anna, uh, the same for you. The future, the actual uh, biggest challenge, and uh, the main outcome for your and uh, how to uh, inspire, you know, similar uh, project. So. Well, I think um, with the, in with the stand up project, we have a, a, a great opportunity to work in a in an industry that is very important for the Mediterranean countries. Mm -hmm. We know that southern Mediterranean countries are one of the most important regions in terms of production and manufacturing of clothes. So I think we have the with this project, we might have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. To, to work with all these manufacturers that wants to change this, their business model, um, answering to, to the increasing, let's say, um, interest from consumers to consume clothes more sustainability. So moving from the fast fashion model to more uh, sustainable or slow fashion. So I think it will be, what we aim is at supporting these uh, companies to transform their business models and having the the mind having the view into the into changing the consumption patterns and not just implementing a small cleaner techniques and the on also i think another important aspect will be to to or or outcome will be to support uh, new entrepreneurs, new designers, uh, small companies that are probably only or selling locally or that have a, a, a local production 
uh, we should help them to to develop this kind of local businesses that target consumers, individual consumers, and help them to, to uh, implement these eco-design, circular design practices that go from the very beginning of the life cycle of a product till the end. So to, to, to help them to, to apply design uh, practices that can keep the resources on the loop uh, for a long, long, long time. So I think we have to, to try to promote all these entrepreneurs and companies that put the focus on how consumers will, will consume these clothes because this is how we will be able to, to change and transform the industry. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. So, Lorenzo, uh, the same for you. Uh, future challenges and uh, the main outcome, uh, even uh, to you know, inspire uh, uh, possible future projects. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, Textman Alliance is, uh, is trying to involve uh, textile companies uh, which uh, might have an interest uh, for cross-border corporations. In one of the three framework initiatives that we decide, uh, which are fashion restart, uh, health emergencies, and of course, uh, a circular economy, uh, for which we are the, the, the leading partner. So, uh, as, as our uh, project name tells, uh, TexMed Alliances, our main goal is trying to do so uh, involving different um, different territories companies to set up a, a sort of alliance in between uh, uh, them and uh, uh, this is our our challenge main challenge to do so even in these very very difficult uh, times so uh, we are changing every activities of course in in a virtual way uh, just for leftover trade as i said before but also for the other two and uh, this i think that um that succeeding in, in doing so uh, will be a, a, the main uh, the main outcome for our project but also i think for all the other projects yeah yeah sure 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 thank you lorenzo thank you and Miriam, what about you and uh, your project? I think uh, the most important challenge uh, that will face uh, Creative, apart, apart from the subgrants that will be given to the existing uh, uh, projects, is the creation of uh, the Living Labs, which uh, will allow traditional companies from textile, clothing, footwear, and leather to co work with create, uh, creative entities and researchers. And uh, for example, in case of ITEX uh, lab, uh, companies and designers will be able to work uh, with the uh, last technologies in terms of uh, sustainable finishing, uh, as for example, uh, laser technology to create uh, new effects by color removal and cutting purposes, eco finish uh, technology used for dyeing and finishing fabrics and garments and ozone technology which uh, provides fashion effects uh, on fabrics uh, between others. I think uh, this is a special uh, and different issue in our project and I think it will be uh, very well uh, uh, mm, well, if it's well focused, that uh, is the case. Uh, it will be uh, given to to the companies a very good value added. Thank you, uh, thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Miriam. Um, uh, Benoit. So uh, we are incredibly and perfectly on time, and uh, I would uh, 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 you to give us. Uh, uh, the last note about uh, the future, the biggest challenges and uh, the best outcome, even to uh, inspire, you know, we hope other projects uh, get inspiration by those projects. Sure. So just as a wrap up, um, as a sort of information, so 
over the last years, um, the SwitchMed program and the, the test methodology uh, demonstrated um, um, a lot of benefits, uh, social, economical, and environmental ones. And uh, it has been demonstrated with facts and success stories in the eight countries, in more than 125 companies, more than 400 startups were supported throughout a, a process which started from incubation to uh, um, marketable products. And it was really like a, a big success, I would say, for SwitchMed. And um, one of the challenges we have in front of us is, on one hand, to explore new thematic areas. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, we recently uh, opened a new component under SwitchMed for the blue economy which aims to support circular economy uh, principles in a uh, coastal and maritime area. Uh, so this is like a new challenge ahead of us in terms of thematics. But on the other end, an important aspect, and I also would like to, to share this message. If you want to know more about the SwitchMed um, practices, there is the Switchers community. And uh, this is a strong um, success of Switch, SwitchMed over the last years, creating a solid community of actors which works together throughout this uh, networking uh, component. And uh, more and more, uh, in March, we will open digitally tools and uh, access to more information through a platform, which is the switchers.org. And I really invite participants and interested people to uh, go to this platform and to get some more insight of the uh, um, stories and uh, entrepreneurs that were supported by the programs that can inspire some more synergies and uh, more activities. So that's our takeaway from there. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you, Benoit. Th thank you. So, uh, Sofia, Anna, uh, Benoit, Lorenzo, Miriam, Frederick, uh, uh, it's been a really great discussion today and we have learned uh, a lot. I personally have learned a lot. And uh, so I just want to say, uh, thank you for uh, to all the our panelists. Uh, please find uh, out more on the any CBC Med and on uh, other uh, project uh, website. And uh, thank you again. I hope you I hope you to meet you soon uh, in person. Thank you all for you. Uh, your participation and contribution. We're still working together. Thank, thank you, you thank Sophia. You very much. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thank you. So now, now you. we Bye. have uh, again uh, Jesse. Jesse uh, is gonna reach you soon. Okay, Jesse. Jesse, interesting conference. No, uh, since we are uh, almost out of time, uh, in uh, in a few words, um, what is the main message that you would like uh, our audience to? Uh, take away from uh, uh, this morning. Uh, um, uh, what's the uh, final piece of advice you'd like to give to our uh, prompt audience? <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, a very interesting morning. Uh, I would say I, I, I could see three main takeaways, I think, that, that are the, what seem to me some of the main insights uh, we can gather from this. And then it also the, the, the specific contribution that Inumed Up can bring to this uh, movement, it, it looks like. The first is that the circular economy is not something where we will be there in five or ten years. It's a, the transition is probably a permanent transition, a permanent beta. It's more a, a, a kind of a dynamic that people are setting into motion. And that involves a shift of mindsets more than anything else. Uh, we heard uh, a lot about training, the role of training, but also narrations, bringing in the social dimension and territories getting a self understanding of what their vocation will be in this in this new world. The, the Reiko Festival is a very interesting example of that kind of thing that, that, that aims to sort of rethink who we are. Uh, as a territory and what, what will happen to us in this new world. The second point is about policies. Uh, creating, okay, the framework conditions, services for waste management and things like that are going to be essential, but it's also imagining what is the new role for the idea of clusters. I thought that the, the clusters in 
you know, met up is very interesting, in, including you say SMEs, but you're really talking about micro businesses, uh, individuals, even very small enterprises, social enterprises. And the clusters are not so much as well, a cert certain kind of efficiency, a different efficiency in the circular economy, but also uh, as opportunities for discovery, discovery of new vocations, discovery of possible circularities, discovery of, of possible business models. And, and another element there is also places, uh, reference places. This can be physical places. We heard about fab labs, living labs, uh, reference models, places people can go to that will represent this, this, this commitment to the circular economy, but also communities like the online community uh, we just heard about. And finally, as I think I was trying to suggest in the, in the opening talk, it, creativity is going to be the driver of all of this. And that, that makes a very, very special role for the uh, cultural and creative industries. Uh, they have a specific responsibility, which, which we're seeing happening within themselves to become circular, to adopt circular practices. But they also need to be leaders in new value chains. And they also need to be the ones diffusing a design culture and a culture of creativity and the discovery of and the implementation of circular uh, practices. In that, all I all I can say in closing, closing that is uh, representing the TCBL Foundation, what I'm happy to see is the uh, role across all of these, uh, many of the, the Inomed up cities and also the other projects of the role of textiles and clothing, fashion. Uh, can have a, an, an important uh, leading role in helping us change our mindset on consumption, but also the textile industry is, uh, and I've heard this in other places, uh, getting, getting to be known as one of the leaders in figuring out how the circular economy can work and what it may look like. So all I can do is to wish you well and to, to wish you success in in these projects really interesting stuff thank you very much for this invitation thank you jesse and thank you for this uh, uh conclusion so permanent transition opportunity to discover and the creativity as uh, as a driver so thank you jesse thank you. and thanks to all our participants for joining us today uh, we hope uh, and well, I mean, we are sure you have found this conference informative and we just see even inspiring. And uh, please do our streaming for today. Thanks again to the municipality of Prato and uh, to the National Technical University of Athens. You may now go and give your personal contribution to the transition to the circular economy. And, uh, you know, we need to make a better world. So everyone have a great day and bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.